I'm Alpha Brony. And I'm Five Iron. And you're listening to The Malaysian Brony Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 37. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good afternoon, Norman. Afternoon? I thought it was night. We always record at night. What well, happened? Well, we were watching the season premiere at night, so yeah, we couldn't be doing two things at the same time. Oh, okay. So, who joined you? I was at a party with uh, News and Ian and a bunch. Ah, oh, funny enough, we got News on. Hello, everybody. How I'm are here. you, News? How was the party? Party was pinky-tastic. There was lots of stuff happening. Uh, food was good. The company was good. Definitely an interesting experience. Do you think Tash would approve? Tash would definitely approve. Funny thing, we got Tash on! Hey Tash! Hey! Did someone say party? I don't know. I don't know. I think they did. Huh. <laughs> I totally heard party. <laughs> Who could that be? That's Who interesting. Could it be? <laughs> well, anyway, um, our guest for this week is Alpha Brony and Five Iron from Brony Time. How are you guys? Hey! <laughs> I was waiting for Five Iron to say something. <laughs> oh, sure. Talk first. I'll talk first. What's up, guys? How you doing? Thanks for having us on. No problem. It's our pleasure to have you on. You're great. That's why we call you. Oh, we know. So. <laughs> <laughs> so modest, too. <laughs> I, I'm doing my best to be a courageous host and keeping it all under control here because I don't have control of the show and I don't have to be responsible for anything. So I, it's like this huge responsibility is lifted and I'm just running free. free uh, I know how you feel, man. I know how you feel because I almost crashed your show. <laughs> It, it's what's gonna happen. I feel very, uh, I feel very self-conscious for whatever he says now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, before we start the show, we have to ask you the four important questions, and I'll start with Alpha. So Alpha, who's your favorite pony? Oh my gosh, um, you know what? I don't know why I'm pausing. It's Derby. Derby followed by Luna. They like compete, but it's always gonna be Derby. Okay, cool. So another any... combo two weeks in a row with Derby as best pony for somebody. <laughs> Because and, Derpy is best pony. That's why people say she's best pony. Okay, cool, cool. And you five? Um, it's always a struggle between Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie. Right now, it's Pinkie Pie. Oh, why Pinkie Pie? Because I saw the, the very short clip of next week's episode. Oh, uh, which one? Was it um, the face? Too many Pinkie Pies. Oh, that one. I was thinking about the face. I was thinking about the face. The face was so awesome. Which one? Which one? Um, the Gen 1 face? Yeah. No, it's, it's Gen 3. Yeah, whatever. Even I worse. I've seen this and I'm terrified. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> you will be. You will be. So anyway, um, Alpha, what's your favorite episode? Another good toss-up one. Uh, I would say either Last Roundup or uh, Luna Eclipse. Mostly Last Roundup because it seems like it's such a fan-centric, such a call-out show. One, of course, they have Derpy. And they have the Isle of Lucy reference. Then they have the Deadpool reference. Then they have a car chase. And it just, there's like so much that happens in this episode. It's like packed with awesomeness. And that's the same reason I like Luna Eclipse as well. There's, you could just freeze frame every single shot. And there's so much stuff going on. Those content crammed episodes are the best ones. Okay, awesome. What about you, Fife? Jerk took both of mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, same, same thing. I, I love share. both those episodes. Um, I guess I'll, since I, I don't want to take the same ones he did, I'll jump in with, um, uh, is it Putting Her Hoof Down with Iron Will? Um, yep. yes. Yeah. Okay, that's the one, that, that's a great episode, because, um, character development, um, you know, being a serve, not being a tool about it, and you get some good, you know, rarity and, uh, Pinkie Pie moments in there. Okay, that's always good. So, my next question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Do you want me to go first? Oh, yeah, I guess I am going first. <laughs> Take charge. All right. I became a fan. Uh, well, my I have a daughter who's now 13. She was 12 um, when we found out the fandom about this time last year, actually. Uh, she was on the My Little Brony site. She was, she always visits the meme-based websites like I guess Cheeseburger, and she saw the Brony one. And oh, no. being a responsible parent, I... Oh, yeah, well, we're gonna, I'm going to tell the whole story. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Yay, story time. It's it's a it's the worst, best worst way to get introduced to the fandom. So, oh god! Uh, no. See what she's looking at. It's not. Stay with me, kids. It's gonna be good. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about editing this. Uh, so, like I see it, and then I start to pay attention. I'm following along because I think it's mostly guys just making fun of it because I don't think guys can like My Little Pony. 
And the more I'm seeing in these posts, the more like in depth they seem. Like people are really starting to pay attention to this, and there's no way this can be like someone on the sidelines making fun of it. And uh, I get to this one post where it's Twilight Sparkle with that Cheshire cat grin, and it's like if I can't find a problem, I'll make a friendship problem. And it shows all these like pictures from history of horrible things that have happened, like the monk who set himself on fire in Vietnam and Twilight's head's poking up. And they show one of the World Trade Center going down and Twilight sparkles in the background. I'm like, holy crap, that is the worst thing ever. And I have to – okay, someone's got to be watching this. So I started watching the show and I'm like, wow, it's funny. That meme was horrible, but this is a great show. And then it's since spiraled on from there. Okay, that's an interesting way to be in the fandom. <laughs> I, I feel like I should almost apologize for this story. No one else has that story. No, and it's I, dude, I was I was interested before, but seeing that one meme was like such a shock, and that's like so horrible. And it's like I got to figure out what's going on because I, I didn't get it, and I had no idea real why someone would put that crap together. So I was like, this has to be something behind it. So huzzah! <laughs> So, Alpha, is your daughter a fan of the show? Yes, yeah, she is. Uh, she's always been a fan of ponies. Uh, when she was a little... Uh, we had a house full of ponies all the time. Oh. Uh, and then she got into the show. So we started recording it for her. And then I started like watching it just to see what it was about. And then I was sneaking in the episodes. And we started watching them together. We're huge fans. My wife becomes a huge fan. My son becomes a huge fan. We all go to BronyCon. Lots of fun. And then I have a podcast now, so... Awesome. It's been a year. <laughs> okay, so um, what about you five? I uh, first became aware of the, uh, uh, I guess, the, the G4 a sure. while ago. Uh, didn't didn't pay much attention. I uh, thought, okay, Hasbro's made another you know, pony line, big deal. Uh, I think we were looking for something for my daughter to watch. She was three or four at the time, and um, uh, I found out they had episodes online. So I was like, okay, we'll, we'll pull this up and watch it. Hey, it's... Uh, in a virtual watching Luna Eclipse is my first episode. Didn't I mean? Didn't hit me real hard uh, um, at first. And I thought it was a neat show. I was impressed with the animation. I thought okay, that's that's more in depth than I thought it was going to be. Didn't really understand what's going on because you got this one pony coming in, it's yelling at everybody, people reacting kind of funny. But you know, again, it was, for me, it was a one shot, no big deal. And we do that a couple more times. We watch a few more episodes, and I start to kind of like it. I thought this is this is much too good to be My Little Pony. What's going on here? And then, you know, on the internet, and the internet happens, and I realize I'm on the tail end of things here, so I start looking into it more. And, you know, when I want to get into it, I looked at uh, forums, but I didn't like, connect with forums real, real well, but so I was like, okay, podcasts. And I found Bronyville. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now, I, now I've got a PD Mark tattoo on my leg, so there you go. Awesome. He really does, too. That's it real life so oh well picture it didn't happen no no he, he was sober when it happened so <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. oh by the way I just want to I just want to say real quick uh Fimer, I was going to leave out the 9-11 reference in my story but since you said oh god I was like well no I gotta <laughs> no, no, say no. it cause no, don't <laughs> blame me you don't blame me for that <laughs> Oh, so now I have to bring it up or else it looks like he overreacts <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so, don't we all yeah, uh, anyway but, but in, in my getting into the show um, uh, I, I, I made the connection between Twilight Sparkle and my wife They're, my wife is the uber nerd like crazy organized um, and my daughter is in, in lines with Pinkie Pie uh, Loves or loves to make cupcakes, stuff like that. Again, minus the whole you know losing their mind aspect of the characters. Not yet. Uh, well, I hope. <laughs> but that's so cool though. Like he, the, he's got the their cutie marks as the tattoo, which is kick ass, dude. So. Oh, cool. Wait, who? Uh, Five Iron got Five, a yeah. yeah. He got a tattoo, cutie mark tattoos. So uh, anyway, what, what go big or go home. Indeed. Exactly. All things. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> on his face on his face <laughs> <laughs> wow getting a job must be easy then <laughs> so anyway um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show um, uh, like I said my wife's in the show as well so she's cool with it I guess I mean she's a brony as well too she still likes to try and make fun of me for it I was like you can't make fun of me because you're a fan too she's like yeah but I'm a girl so it's fine you know we have that 
that joking thing that makes our life so cute, said Kami. Um, friend, uh, my parents know that I'm a brony. Uh, when they were up, I told them I had a podcast. I thought that was cool. They heard about all the good stuff that bronies had done. So uh, that was easy enough. I uh, really haven't really talked much to my extended family about it because it's not my end-all be-all. And uh, I really, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't shatter from the hills, but I don't hide it. I mean, I have derpy on my car, so anyone who pulls up next to me will see that I'm a brony. And then I wear we love fine t-shirts. So it's a, uh, they can be think whatever they want. I, mean, I haven't heard any backlash or like, what the hell or anything like that. So, so far it's been pretty nominal. All right. All right. What about you five? Um, family wise, um, my family knows I'm kind of strange to begin with. I've always been a cartoon. Shut up. I've always been a cartoon. Dude, shut up. I've always been a cartoon enthusiast. Uh, love cartoons. Love drawings, animation, stuff like that. Not, not like. It was people here that think, oh, oh, he's an anime fan. Well, I know of anime, but I, I don't watch anime on a regular basis. Um, I've always like, you know, like the Warner Brothers and stuff like that. Um, so for me to like. The cartoon is like, no big deal, he likes cartoon. But I haven't exactly thrown it out there that, oh, like the ponies, or I'm you know, on a pony podcast. In fact, I don't think my family knows about it. My, my wife knows about it, of course. Um, and my family has seen me in my Rainbow Dash Pop-Tart t-shirt. Wow. But I think that's about the extent of it. Yeah, it's like we, um, it's not that big a deal. I mean, I like how we hear about people like saying, like, I don't know how to tell my family I'm a brony, or how do I let people know? It's like, just be yourself. Fly your flag. Um, you don't have to be waving in other people's faces, but you don't have to be like ashamed or shy or whatever, you know. The bigger a deal you make out of it, the more people <laughs> will act like it's a big deal. But if you, you know, right, lay right. low or, and I don't say lay low, that's, you know what I mean. Am I making sense yet? Or Yeah, I understand. Like, if you make a big deal about it, uh, people will find it and attack it. Yeah, it's like, look at me, I'm a brony. It's like, who cares? <laughs> you know. Okay, cool. Well, now we can proceed on to the show. And Woo. next topic is housekeeping. And nothing to housekeep about, but the My Little Pony mobile game is out. So why don't we review that one? Yay! Hey. Yeah, you made me put it down so I could... <laughs> <laughs> I was playing it during the entire pre-show. It's like, just, I'll put it down when we start recording, so... And it's the first thing we're going to talk about. So anyway, guys, yeah, yeah. Um, let's start with myself. Um, I think the game is... Well, kind of fun to play and addictive. What about you guys? It's Farmville, isn't it? Mm. More or less. Is it Smurf Village? <laughs> it's Smurf <laughs> Village. I would agree with that statement. <laughs> it's a generic freemium city builder which just has ponies in it. And it's proof that if you put ponies into it, people will jump on it. <laughs> well, it's all in the presentation, you know. What they say? Yep. 70% how you look, 10% how you sound. You know, well, not that goes. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool game. I... I it's a, it's a time meet. That's definitely true. It's, yeah, it's. I would say it's more like a time based game. Rewards are determined by how much you play. So the more you play, the more rewards you get. And frankly, it's a very successful marketing strategy. Uh, if you think about it, um, the people who created the game, they are genius because this kind of model works. It's proven to work. It has been done in Smurfs Village. People, lots of people have played it. And now they're introducing it in a, or rather they're repackaging it with ponies and stuff, and they already have got a huge fan base for it. So, yeah, it's it's a recipe for success. People will play. So I, I think the Brony fandom has been asking for an official game from anybody, Hi, really. And it's got lots of like fan made references in it. They they are clearly targeting the fan base. Um, things like their behooves is in there. It's Lyra, Bonbon, bon, DJ Pwn Tree. All these are the fandoms reference, so more, all the more appealing it is for, for Bronies to actually pick up the game. True, true. And the game is quite cheap. It's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> and Unless you want to buy stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People buy I used to buy an buy. iPad for it. Well, so, no, like, they have, like, the, like the crystals you can, uh, like, accumulate to unlock stuff. Or you can yeah. just buy them. The one that kills me is there's a $100 pack for what they call a mountain. That's an actual measurement <laughs> of of these crystals. So you can pretty much just skip through the game super fast. And right. it's like, wow, who has that kind of money? Why would you spend that money on a game? And why would you defeat the whole purpose of the game? His name is Filthy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in the game. 
So if you buy Filthy Rich, you unlock everything? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> if I... you are Filthy Rich, you unlock everything. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, guys, um, let's do a roll call on who's playing on what. Um, I'm playing on an iPhone 4 and a 4S. What about you, Daniel? Wait, what do you mean 4 and 4S? You're playing on two phones? More or less, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Make it friend himself. <laughs> That's what I did. Aha, uh-huh. no wonder. I'm playing on an Asus Pad phone, Android 4.0. News? Yeah. I'm playing on an old Generation 1 iPad, and I also have the game on the iPhone 4, but I play on the iPad. Oh, okay. Tash? Uh, I'm playing on the iPhone 4. I actually have an iPad, but I'm just playing on the phone, which is probably a bad idea, considering how often this thing is near me. <laughs> okay. Um, Alpha? I am playing on the, the beautiful Galaxy Nexus, running Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. Oh, okay. And what about you, Five? <laughs> I am rocking the iPhone 4. Okay, so um, anybody notice any performance issue with the versions that you're running on? Yes. I mean, it takes a little while for it to load up. Okay, so um, why don't we go for the Android? Let well, our yeah, guess. Like it first, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like... Yeah, I mean, we, we guys, we four have almost the same devices, so it's not going to be that interesting. So let's let the Android go first. Alpha, why don't you go first then? Well, it seems to work out pretty well. Uh, about the big issue that I've seen, it seems like everyone else is with the uh, the networking aspect of it because it's supposed to connect to GameLoft's server or to Facebook because some of the achievements and things you have to do have to connect with friends. Which, like, me, I kind of just want to play the game. Which is sad. I'm playing a game about friendship and I want to play it by myself. So, how ironically sad is that? <laughs> but, uh, we've, I, like, I added Norman as a friend. And if I go onto the server, it says we're friends. But he doesn't show up as my friend. My only friend is Celestia. <laughs> which is, she's all I need. Um, but, uh... That's I wouldn't agree with that. But it, it does find that weird things that, like, some of the Apple catching games, sometimes it doesn't respond when you tap to run side to side. So... Twilight will just end up running into the side of the wall and just keep running there without stopping. I, I don't think so. That's an issue. I think that could be momentum playing through. Because if you press too long, she would run for longer. It's kind of a thing, like asking you to control the button instead of just pressing it and hoping it will stop. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, it could be that because it happened to me. So I, but it doesn't I, always happen. If you notice, if you press to the... Let's just say you press to the right for too long... And you let go, she keeps running. I haven't noticed that, actually. Not against the wall. Oh, well, I'm not um, sure if that one, but... I, I actually encountered this. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you release and it, they continue running. But most of the time, at least on the iPad, it, it kind of works fine. Only occasionally it does. Okay, so, um, Alpha, you were saying? Yeah, the only thing I'd say is that there is no pause or quit. It just goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why do you want to pause a game that needs your time? You know, let it run. Well, and that's the thing too. So I have it set. So I guess it just runs in the background when you close it. But then I get all these notification pop-ups. Let me know. So my phone is beep, <laughs> beep, <laughs> beep. Pinkie Pie is ready to play. Beep. Twilight Sparkle is ready to play. Beep. Bomb is ready to play. Oh, my God. oh boy. Come on, dude. So anyway, uh, um, no, nothing more than that? Well, I have no. a few actually. Okay, oh, so okay. Um, that was it. What's yeah, the difference? Uh, I don't know what it's because I bash my Android devices a lot, but basically the notifications come in at, you know, the notification bar in Android, and it tells me um, if a house is ready to be built. Now, if the app crashes before that, if I return to the game, the house is not there. It says, like, Miss, like Mrs. Cupcake is, well, get ready to welcome Mrs. Cupcake or Mrs. Cupcake is in Ponyville, and then you enter the game, the house is not there. You just have to rebuild it, but you don't lose any bits, that's the thing. I've seen that too. You have to stay oh, till it's finished. Huh. Yeah, that happens. And um, other than that, there was another bug that I noticed. Yeah, um, if you're playing on an iPad, because uh, before this I tested it on my mom's iPad too. Uh, if you're playing on an internet connection that bans games, like my university's internet connection does not allow for games. If you play there and you enter the store, it's empty. Hmm. Like someone cleared it out, you know. <laughs> Feel free to reach myself being greedy then. So yeah, that's about it for Android. Works well on both the phone and the tablet. It's really smooth. Oh, okay. Um, so, news, what do you think? Bugs-wise or general game-wise? Uh, well, since we're talking about the problems, why don't we go for the problems first? Problems? I think that generally the game is pretty stable. It has only occasionally crashed once or twice, particularly when you're accessing the game menus and stuff like that. Um, but you have, a, sorry, uh-huh. you have a jailbroken iPad, right? Yeah, the iPad's jailbroken. Oh, okay. Um, 
Well, uh, one thing I did notice, I never mentioned it before, is the store is perpetually empty. As in, no internet connection available. Please make sure your device is connected to the internet. So hmm. I can never access the store. Oh. And well, it's the those. same thing as then, then. Yeah. I don't think that's a bug. I think that's a feature that you need to play online. Not exactly, because when I switch the iPad to airplane mode, the store comes back. Hmm, okay. Yeah, maybe maybe it's because it's jailbroken or I've got some conflicting app that actually does not allow me to connect to the store, but I'm fine with that because, um, well, paying real monies for virtual money has never been a, something I would do, <laughs> like, ever. Like Microsoft points. <laughs> <laughs> right, things like that. Other than that, I think the game is pretty well, uh, pretty well stable for 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 the iOS device. Oh, okay. It's, actually, just a quick question, Alpha. Did you install yours from the Android market? Yes, I did. Okay, because I don't know why mine does not allow me to do that. I had to get the APK from Four Chan of all places. <coughs> really? Yeah. Uh, it it says it's not compatible with my device, and I checked my list of devices because I've been working on a development tablet. And I use that to fake a T-Mobile SIM card. And that's the only device that can install the game. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. So, Tash, what about you? Um, just the issues, possibly, mm-hmm. with the game. Yeah, um, yeah. I've encountered instances where I was playing, like, the Apple catching game. Yeah. And the... You know how when you get the points and then it goes to the bar and stuff, and then it turns, and then sometimes it hangs, and it just keeps on turning, and it doesn't... And it's like... Uh, so it turning the multiply then. multiply thing? Yeah. It continues turning and it goes into the multiply thing and it just gets stuck there. It's like times two, times four, times one. I don't know what you want, woman. It's like, <laughs> it's like confused. <laughs> I've seen that once too. Same here, that. same here. I think that's, uh, well, I have to say that that bug is everywhere then, right? Uh, not in the Android, I think. I don't see it in the Android. Though. Well, uh, Alpha said I, you I, see I haven't it. come across it. You have, Alpha? Well, in my totally legal version of the phone that I have, it does that sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay, so it happens to me too. And um, performance-wise, I had to delete a lot of games to make it run okay, just to, well, like I said, not make it slow. But still, uh, the iPhone 4, it runs really slow. But on the 4S, it runs smooth. Like, no problem. And oh, yeah, I think it could be the processor power and RAM. How much power does the RAM have then and the processor? For what, your iPhone? I'm not sure. iPhone versus 4S. Uh, 4S, I know, is dual core. So yeah, it's got a, it's got that edge there. Mm, so that's why it's running smoothly then. Well, that explains it then. <laughs> well, I would say on my extremely fast, extremely smooth the Galaxy Nexus, I don't have any performance issues. Five Iron, do you experience any performance issues? I can, I can back out of the program without having to turn my phone off. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, actually, uh, Android, you can back out of the program as well. You, there's a, you yeah. just press back twice and you it asks you... Would you like then, 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 then. I'm, I'm glad you're here Alpha. <laughs> Nobody cares. Android users, no way. <laughs> no, me and Flymire go back and forth about which about how my phone is better and he refuses to accept that. But, you know, it's, it's a thing we do. Uh, I know. We have that banter too, but I'm not that dickish when it comes. I'm just doing it now because it's fun and I'm recording. <laughs> it's kind of way I do it. <laughs> right, Five Iron? Like <laughs> <laughs> He's my only friend. <laughs> in the game or in real life? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, but, but seriously, Android is good. Android is good. That it is. Yes. But overall, um, makes for a good market. True, true. It does. I, I'm wondering about the the compatibility based on geographical location because I actually had my device reformatted my other development device. Before the reformat, it was on a Malaysian SIM and it says it's incompatible. But when after the reformat, I put it on American SIM and it's compatible. It's the same device. Hmm. That's interesting. Wait, um, Dan, you said yeah. that Ian has the game, right? Who? Ian. Yeah, he does. Um, how did he install the game? Uh, he said from the App Store. I don't know how he did it. He has a Galaxy S... No, Galaxy S2, yes. Samsung Galaxy S2. Legal Malaysia, right? I believe so. Hmm. Bad the, boys, the, bad. <laughs> this is interesting. This is interesting. Um, I think it could be your phone. You job, you broke it, something like that? I didn't break my phone. My phone. I, I don't break the main phone I use. I never have it. Hmm. That's interesting. And odd. Hmm. Okay, well... Um, Overall opinion on the game? What do you guys think? I like it. It's fun. 
I give it two hoofs up. <laughs> okay. I'm deleting Angry Birds for this. I deleted Angry Birds too. And cut the rope. And um, Mega Man Why X. cut the rope? I cut the rope. Omnon is so cute. <laughs> oh, I did it. Most of the games. The only thing inside there is, I think ponies. Uh, they're small, but I don't remember. I want to see Omnon oh, oh. riding on a pony. <laughs> <laughs> what about oh, you, Fi? Versus Pinkie really Pie. Cool. Oh God, no. <laughs> so anyway, um, Fi, what do you think? Is like the race for the candy. Just, just want to throw out a question out there about the game. Uh, what kind of updates do you think the game uh, is going to have in the future? Probably more, more ponies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, talking about more ponies, did you guys oh, notice? Sorry, new locations such I... as the Crystal Empire. Um, uh, news yeah. told me about I that, think... but the thing is, the game is called My Little Pony. Welcome to Ponyville. Really? Yeah, that's what the official name for the game is. So the I don't really think that it will move to the Crystal Empire. Yeah, what well, you know, like, about the? Uh, on the Android, the subtitle is My Little Pony, and the subtitle is Friendship is Magic. No, that's a show, but it is space, so it happens, you know. <laughs> Could be. No, five. What were you? What were you going to say? Well, I was going to ask what y'all thought about how they, I guess, justified rebuilding a town that already exists with the whole Nightmare Moon um, coming back. But then again, Luna is a selectable character. The thing is, um, interesting enough, you talk about Luna. The thing is, um, I looked through the whole marketplace, and Luna is not there. Are you sure? Oh, I thought she was on one of like, the last pages. Um, no, no, she's, she's not, not there. In, she's not in this at all. Is it in yours? I'm almost, I'm almost positive all right. I saw her there. Luna will Isn't be it? an expansion set. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh-huh. just, just some speculation. You know the, like, the highest level apparently is Celestia level 50? So maybe as time goes on, when players start getting closer to the level 50 or reach level 50 where it's the max level, then they're going to update with... Who knows? Interesting Maybe enough that you say that because um, hmm? right? Um, interesting you say that. Too many um, games. <laughs> There's three. There's three. Flying actually. one counts. Oh, okay, the three. Okay. Well, um, you're talking about levels, right? And from yeah. what I saw, the decorations. There's a level fifty-nine cap. Fifty-nine cap on the decorations. Yeah, sure. I, I'm double checking it now, and um, well, it goes up to fifty-two. It's for the wedding gate, wedding flowers. Basically, the wedding set. That's at a 52 cap. Hmm. Interesting. So, the game does go higher than um, 50. So, we can surpass the last year. Woo-hoo. Awesome, awesome. There's something beyond. Hmm, but I think the next update... So, guys, um, next update, more ponies. Who do you want to see in the game? Let's go around think... like this. Norman, you start. Um, oh, I don't know. Um... I want to see Derpy. <laughs> uh, seriously, I, I want to see Derpy as a selectable character, not some random Mary in a box. But the problem is, there are actually quests pertaining to um, Derpy, so. Uh, Put Screwball in the box! <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. But so, yeah, that would be awesome, actually. If Derpy was selectable, I think more people would go very excited about it. What about you, Daniel? She's not a selectable character? No, she's. Um, uh, she's just a random character, NPC. What about you, Dan? Ah, yes. Me. I want the third Wonderbolt in this. Who? The one with the yellow mane. Oh, oh right. Spitfire. I need to know her. Na- That's orange. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the fluffy yellow mane. I need to know her name and it has to be surprise. Nope. <laughs> she has to be in this. I, I'm surprised if it's not. <laughs> Me and my surprise puns. Anyway, uh, news. what about you? I would agree that Derby should be a selectable character, but other than that, I guess Pipsqueak is pretty okay. Mm, okay, cool. <laughs> what about you, Tosh? I was actually better to say Pipsqueak as well, because that would be so cute. Oh, okay. Actually, I did check the store properly. Uh, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon in the store? Yeah, yeah. yes, they are. Okay. So anyway, um, Alpha, what about you? I'm going to go with my uh, multiple locations. I want to see Cloudsdale, I want to see Canterlot. I think There's Cloudsdale is there. You can see Candlelot as well. See. Oh, no, I want to play in those cities. Oh, okay. That would be interesting. New location. The best in the next update. Sim City Candlelot. <laughs> Sim City Candlelot. Oh, no. What about you yeah, five? And then I want Godzilla come through. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Spike's being greedy again. <laughs> five, what about you? Uh, I want combat. I want to fight a changeling. 
Huh, hmm. combat. That's interesting. I want to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. How about they should PvP. Fight. That'd be cool. <laughs> player versus player. I don't think so that's going to work because the people that pay more will win. Yeah, true. That's the way it is with anything. <laughs> but um, how do you say... Uh, now, about selecting the ponies, you know, when you tap on them and then they say something to you, why on earth is Mrs. Cupcake welcoming me? <laughs> She's welcoming you to the store. No, 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 no. When I tap on her when she first comes... She's welcoming you to the store. Ah. That's my logic. She oh. needs to say something else. Come on, she's such a great character. She needs to say something else. Anyway, um, Five Iron just sent in an interesting photo and it's about the selection page. And yes, Luna is a playable character, but if you go to the store and try to buy her or see how you can get her, she's not there. You have to win her with the... No, can you even win her with Balloon Pop? I don't know. That's the thing. She's totally random. I got no idea how you get her. Probably level unlockable. Hmm. Is she pulling a pinky? Is that what's happening? I got no idea. Think, now think about this. What happens when Twilight unlocks all the spots of darkness and reveals all of the element shards? <gasps> Ooh! You know, when? You unlock what? Luna! Yeah, you could ha- it could happen. Or I mean, maybe you might have some sort of combat mode that comes out. Or maybe you have to build lots of happy structures in order to combat the evil of Nightmare Moon and eventually free the spirit of Luna. If the Paris Prize don't kill you first. <laughs> I think I shall discover the answer by playing the game right now. Just <laughs> Oh god, no. So anyway, guys, um, what do you give it out of 5, then? Me, I'll give it a 3.5. 3.5, okay. Muse? I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Tosh? I'll give it a 3. Alpha? I'm going to say 4 out of 5 until bug issues are resolved, and then it'll probably be like a 5, because it's something I could see dying in front of <laughs> wasting my time, like I'm about to right now. <laughs> okay. What about you, 5? Uh, I gotta look at it two different ways. Uh, just the the brony perspective, I go to four out of five just because it's ponies. Uh, on the practical side, I go to one out of five because I hate games that make you try and spend real money to progress. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I do hate that. Like, you can pretty much get through this without having to do that, though. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna spend a penny on this, but I'll I'll play it. <laughs> but have you considered about spending any penny on the game? Well, see, I. I'll, uh, I've, I've shared before that I, I enjoy the Team Fortress 2 from time to time, and I made the mistake of not understanding exactly what I was getting into with their market, and I purchased a few too many keys before, so I'm, <laughs> wary, I'm wary to do that again. I made that mistake, but not with keys, with weapons. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, so, uh, looking at the Android uh, store, the Google Play store, the average rating is 4.6. Anyone can pull up the iTunes? Well, um, not me. I have to open iTunes, and that's going to eat up time. Anybody has iTunes then? What about you, Five? Can you do it? Um, un momento. Because the iTunes US store is much more reliable than our store. Anyway, um, my rating, I'll give it at a 3 out of 5 as a gamer point of view. The game is entertaining, it's fun, but the model that it's doing right now, yeah, I wish they do something else. Like I said before, a pony RPG, that would be fun. Yeah, and, uh, I'm just looking at the... Then I would like more content. Yep, yep. The iTunes store has five out of five. Yeah. How many out of how many people? Three. <laughs> Malaysia. No, wait, two, two, no, 2,861 ratings, but three reviews. <laughs> <laughs> they must be bronies. I'm just going to put Oh, oh my god, someone purchased the Mountain of Gems. Seriously? <laughs> oh my god. On the purchase top in at purchases list. Number 10, Mountain of Gems, $99.99. Oh, on iTunes. Christ. Oh god. <laughs> Who is that person? Some patient boy who wants to get out of the game and, you know, show everyone, I've done it. What's the point? It's like, skip, 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 skip. Ponyville's been on. Hang up you phone. didn't do it like a real man. You don't deserve it. When the when a girl says that, uh, when a girl says that, you're in trouble, man. <laughs> so, expect it to turn. <laughs> so, five fire in? You got the American store? It's good How is it? Uh, it's got it's got three hundred five star reviews on the uh, U.S. Uh, iTunes App Store thing. Okay, so on average, everybody likes the game then. It looks that way. Oh, scratch that. That's way off. It showed three hundred. It's actually got two thousand eight hundred eighteen five star reviews. Oh snaps! Wow. And on the Malaysian store, it's five with fifteen ratings. 
that's we need to work with that. We need to work with that. We need, we need yeah. to make it higher than that. Yes, Winston, I see your review. <laughs> Anyway, um, everybody likes the game, so go buy it. It's free. Wait, stop uh, in-app purchases from Malaysia. The Mountain of Gems was bought here. Oh, snap. Somebody... <laughs> Norman, we're calling you out right here, right now. I don't have a penny in my bank account. Seriously, it's not yeah, me. you want a mountain of gems. That's why you don't have because any Because it's like pile of gems, pile of bits, scoop of bits, scoop of gems, mountain of gems. Oh. <laughs> Which Malaysian is responsible for this? Shush. Shush. Nobody should know. It's, we're all friends here, Norman. You can speak to us. <laughs> Moving on to the next... I'm wanting to talk to you about your problems. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the <laughs> next topic. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, anyway, in the next topic, we have news time. So, in today's news time... Bruni, thank you, Segway. commercial. It's on... <laughs> yes, indeed. Stay away. Like I was saying, uh, Bruni, thank you, commercial. It's on YouTube now. So, some of you might remember a while back, there were a group of bronies that wanted to say thank you to the people that created the show. The way they did it was by creating a commercial to be shown on the hub. So, as for the rest of the world who can't get the hub, the commercial is out on YouTube for us to watch. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, who here have watched the commercials? I have. I did. I did, too. So, all of us? Oh. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, what do you guys think? It was good. I liked the... Um, it was going to be a message. I think they got the point across. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of funny because I remember when they were interviewing the guy who was heading up the project. I cannot remember his name for the life of me now. But I know he was on like Bronyville and they were talking about it. He's like, we're going to interview a whole bunch of people. We're going to try and get all these people. We're going to do these extensive background checks. We're just going on and on. It's like, wow, this is going to be something epic. And they have three people in the video. And I understand it's like a 30-second clip, but I thought it was kind of... Uh, and I'd like to come back to what they're planning for. But uh, it, it was cool the way it was done. So I do like it. And I think it's cool true, true. to finally show people that, look, we're bronies. We're fans of the show. And we just want to say thanks. And I think that part is really awesome. Yeah, that's true. I noticed that they use a lot of military people for the shots. Yeah, FOB Equestria. Oh, okay, cool. And... I thought it was just the one guy they show a couple. Because, well, they have the... Um, if you see it on YouTube, they have the extended cut, which has the intro by Lee Tokar, oh, yeah. the 30-second commercial, and then the five minutes of... Floopers. Yeah, and the ones that didn't make the cut. So if you watch those, you can see all the different inputs, and there are a lot of military ones as well. But uh, it, it's because they only use a very few, for, and they have a repeating people for the, uh, for the actual commercial. And I think if they didn't repeat people only to show different ones, I think it might have been a little bit more seemed a little bit more broad. I mean, they had a pretty good perspective. They had a young girl, they had a kid, they had the military guy, and I think there was, like, someone else. I think and there's just... a scientist inside a lab. Yeah. 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 So, so it's those four people that recycled. So, but it, it was still neat. It's cool. It's cool they got that done, so. That's true. I, mean... I, can't, I can't think of, a, of another fandom that has had that kind of a, uh, first off, a, an adverse response from the media, like, you know, what the heck's a brony? And then, you know, the fans get together and say, hey, look, here we are. We like it. Calm down. Um, I, can't, I mean, like, we often were compared to uh, Star Trek fans um, just for the uh, enthusiasm and the stick to it this, um, even though we're only what, what season three. Um, but finally, that, yeah, yeah, no, seriously. But I, I can't think of another fandom that's had that kind of um, motivation to make sure they go out of the way to say thank you to the content providers. And that was the cool thing about the commercial, too, because it wasn't so much like, we're here, we're bronies, you know, you might not, it wasn't anything like that. It was just like, hello, Hub, thank you for being awesome, goodbye. And that's all it was. There was no chest beating or, uh, or like, you know, like celebration itself or anything. It was totally just what it was. Thank you. <laughs> and which was so, neat in and of itself. So basically, it's a thank you drive-by then? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you! <laughs> I don't know. So, guys, um, news. I I remember you saying that you were worried about the commercial, right? Oh, regarding the cost of it, like they're receiving lots of cash for it. And yeah, and I remember it, that you're talking about how would it look negative towards the whole community and whatnot. Hmm. Well, it's more towards the the money issue because yeah, well, it's involving a lot of money, and at that point, at that time, early on, we didn't know how legit it was. So, 
there were definitely doubts. I'm sure plenty of people felt, felt the same way. But at the end of the day, it's actually uh, professionally done. And um, I'm not sure. Currently, all the extra cash that actually uh, went towards the project, they donated it, right? Yeah, I think they donated it to a fund called uh, Derpy Scholarship. It's ah, something Pekel to Arts, do. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, what's yeah, the scholarship? Is um, I I think it's Derpy something, but Derpy the Moves scholarship for Kerala for uh, uh budding animators, creative arts, I think. Or yeah, animators. because uh, Kerala Arts is the same college or university. Is it university, right? Institution. Yeah, it's the same institution oh, that Lauren Faust went. Right. So, you know, they want to, you know, give people the same knowledge kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can brag about, hey, I was in CalArts, the same place where Lauren Faust was in. Yeah. So, it's like CalArts, the Harvards of uh, animation or something? I Suppose think so. so. Could be. Not sure. I mean, this is cool. This is cool. And if I remember right, um, Lee Tokar is one of the chairman for the Brony Thank You Funds, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, part yeah. of the team. Oh, well, I think this covers it. Let's move on to the next topic. And Dan, why don't you cover this one? So, Disney has their eyes set on Hasbro, true or false? With Disney's recent purchase of Lucasfilm Limited, rumor has it that Disney is interested in getting their hands all over Hasbro. But a CNBC analyst, David Faber, how you pronounce his name, reported that Hasbro advisors told him there's absolutely nothing going on that they are aware of at all in any way, shape, or form involving Hasbro or Disney. So, do you think it's safe to say that these rumors are false? Yep. That they are aware of at the moment, huh? They always use politically correct answers. Yep. Well, if they do use politically correct, they say, we cannot confirm or deny, no worries, we would open to speculate, and blah, 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 blah. But when he says, no, then it's like, okay, that must be no. <laughs> No, but the thing can is, be found in the show notes to all of the rumors and the, the whole rumor mill is there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, they just bought Lucas Films for two thousand. Sorry, um, for four point five mil. Sorry, bill four point five billion. So, for them to go after Hasbro now is kind of stupid because they haven't earned anything back from Lucas. Yeah, they kind of blew their wad already. Yeah, <laughs> and fun fact. Um, Hasbro and Disney they're already working together oh yeah on uh, what? the merchandise from the Marvel movies the Star Wars movies now all made by Hasbro really? Ooh, okay yeah interesting. Oh. so in some way they're already working with each other so for Disney to buy out Hasbro I don't think Hasbro wants to do that and with that move might they might cause a friction in their relationship already of course they will. Celestia will become the non-first non-human Disney princess. Oh. It, that joke came out when Leia joined in Disney. Yeah, I know. Oh. Now when Celestia comes in, Leia's going to the moon, where she belongs. <laughs> I just want to see uh, Fluttershy pen a Wookiee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but... Or like playing with the Jawas or something. <laughs> or the Ewoks. <laughs> But now, here's an interesting question. With this rumor going on, do you think Hasbro will sell out to Disney? I don't think so. Nah. They've got too much. They've been pretty. Going. Yeah. Can you imagine if Disney took on like Transformers or something under the Hasbro name? Well, I don't. Like, uh, I used to hate Disney, and then I sort of like gone over it. Like when they acquired Marvel, I was like so pissed off and scared. I was like, "Well, there goes everything awesome about Marvel." But um, they're really letting Marvel do their own thing, and now they're just giving Marvel access to more resources as far as like distribution methods, uh, different artists and things like that, but they're not squelching the creative uh, freedoms of uh, Marvel. Because, I mean, I was thinking, like, well, my favorite series are the Max series, like Punisher Max and things like that. And I was like, great, that's all going to be, like, shut down with Disney stamped on there, you know? But they really haven't done anything like that. So, uh, you know, I guess... Yeah, they're sort of like, do your thing that makes money because that's why we bought you to make money and you know what you're doing, so keep doing what you're doing. And I think that's kind of the relationship that Marvel and Disney have. And I think that with the takeover of Lucasfilms is everyone knows and it's become sort of a joke of how much George Lucas is destroying the things we all love. <laughs> and it's pretty much they bought LucasArts to save LucasArts from Lucas. <laughs> awesome answer. Awesome answer. No, but Disney, everything's going to be in THX. 
<laughs> no, but uh, from what I understand, right, with Lucas, he already destroyed his own fandom before the prequels. Remember the... um, What are those little bears? Ewoks. Ewoks. Yeah, remember the Ewoks? Okay, sorry, I have not been out of the picture. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, uh, remember the Ewoks? It was a marketing ploy to get kids to buy more plushies for, for the show. That's what it was. Ooh. Pretty much people got pissed off when uh, uh, he released the he released the trilogy on like VHS. And then he released the special edition with edited stuff. Oh. And he just keep going and going and going. And now you can get it on Blu-ray. And now they're edited some more and changed up even more to the point where it's ridiculous. And now they're doing it on Blu-ray with more edits. And then it's going to come out again on Blu-ray, uh, 3D Blu-ray. And oh, now with even God. more stuff. And it's like, someone stop George Lucas now. <laughs> I think Disney did the right thing. Yeah, they had to. And everyone's been saying that. I think everyone thought the first three movies sucked. I liked the f- episode three. But that's because I like the idea of Christian Hayden, or whatever his name is, getting his limbs cut off and set on fire. <laughs> I think that's the best one of that. So that was cathartic for me. But other than that, it sucked. <laughs> I think um, I think it was Andy Price uh, on Twitter that said, "If you're worried about Disney uh, ruining Star Wars, that's like worrying about a second iceberg going down to the bottom of the ocean and hitting that, hitting that Titanic again." <laughs> oh, and something awesome. they've been announcing for Episode Seven sounds awesome. Um, they got um, uh, oh, what's his name? He's like one of my um, the guy who directed Kick Ass, uh, uh, Matthew yeah. Vaughn. No, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, Somebody. X-Men for us. Oh, um, first, uh, I think it's... Ah, I forgot his name. Anybody remember? Just just Matthew YouTube Vaughn, message right? me. I don't think so. It's... Ah, I can't remember. Anyway. I'm too young to know any of this. If somebody knows, just YouTube it and we'll uh, read it later. But anyway, um, you were saying? Yeah, so that director is in talks to episode 7. Um, they have this other writer who had done a couple other like uh, big name things. It's good, you know, I have this on the tip of my tongue, but the writer looks good, the director looks really awesome as well, too, and then there's talks about bringing the original cast back. Oh, as well. no. Uh, so. For me, I personally want the story to move on beyond the Luke story, like, make, push it a thousand years ahead. Well, the thing is, like, if you look at the expanded, uh, here's my nerd on my previous Baroni nerd coming just out just here. making a Crystal Empire joke out of a thousand years. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's like uh, in the expanded universe, they talk about like episodes seven, eight, and nine are focusing on Han and uh, Han and Leia's children, uh, the new solos, and like them growing up, and then also dealing with Luke now that he's a master Jedi, trying to restart the uh, academy. Yeah, uh, uh, the, yeah, restart the Jedi Order. Uh, there's been a couple other things where it shows how he like gets turned to the dark side, and turns against the kids, and it's kind of like pretty much a the exact same story with Darth Vader, uh, you know, except now it's Luke Skywalker who has to find salvation, and then Emperor Palpatine gets cloned, and they make a giant Star Destroyer which can blow up suns. And it's there's a couple of things that really get crazy out there when you talk about the expanded universe. Uh, but that's kind of the idea of where that goes. Now, if Disney's going to follow that and do that same thing, uh, who knows? And they probably won't because that sounds kind of crappy. Well, but hmm. it looks like it'll be. The original cast has grown up, and now their children. Because it's always been a generational thing. It was Anakin when he was young, then it was Luke when he was young, and now it's going to be that next generation of Skywalkers or for the next three. Okay. I think Disney has had a reputation for that since Toy Story Three. Ooh, the story that grows up with you, especially this yeah. generation. Well, if it were to happen, that would be cool. We, I, I want to see. Um, Christopher Nolan touched the Star Wars. Ooh. Yeah, who would be the great director to take over? Joss Whedon. Oh yeah, that'd be Can awesome. He, yeah. Who did Star? Mm-hmm. Who did Star Trek? Uh, that was J.J. Uh, Abrams. Yeah, let him touch it. Let's see how it works. I don't think I could handle that much lens flare though. <laughs> so you might get confused uh, halfway through and like, wait, what am I directing again? <laughs> and throw his own stuff in it. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, let, let's move on because we're not talking about ponies anymore. So, uh, Tash, why don't you take this one? Oh, okay. Season 4, possibly in the works. Ooh. As some of you might know, Season 3 has only 13 episodes planned and the future of the series is still unknown beyond the 13 episodes. Hmm. But, 
a rather interesting document has popped up. And the document is a DHX Investors Relations document. Ooh, so official. In the document, it states that the breakdown for major projects over $0.10 million for DHX Vancouver was $1.63. Wait, no. $1.60 million for My Little Pony Seasons 2 to 4. Does this mean we will have Season 4? Any thoughts, guys? Oh, and links in the show notes. Huh. Season 4. This will be interesting. What yes. Was it? Three million. Definitely. I, think I got the worst definitely. podcast responses. Like, <laughs> Is this going to be true or false? It's false. <laughs> will it be a Season 4? Yes. All right, well, I guess that sums it up then, doesn't it? <laughs> Show over, let's move on. <laughs> I think it's quite Meanwhile, I'll divulge onto Star Wars for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Season 3 has only has got 13 episodes, and if you guys remember, Daniel Ingram posted up on Vivian Art. Uh, no, one it's um, one Will Anderson. Sorry, Will Anderson. Oh, Will Anderson. Yeah. Oh, Will Anderson, sorry. And, yeah, 13 is not enough, so... Maybe they're going to do another 13 for season 4, most likely. It might be a hint that, you know, he's got a commission already to work on season 4 music. Might just be a hint. Could, Could be. be. Can speculate. I mean, if... I think what we're missing the point here is money. And... Money. Yeah. yeah, Pony is making money for Hasbro. So, if they want to cancel it after... Third, 13 episodes on 3 seasons is gonna be stupid yeah I agree I'll throw out a cash cow yeah. yeah Five, you've been quiet what do you think? no I'm listening um, if they <laughs> end this um, I, I'll be sad <laughs> um, but you you wanna see fan rage I mean that, oh. that will be just think about just think about what the Bernies have done in you know Two seasons and two episodes, countless charities, ridiculous number of conventions across you know not just the U.S. but the world, um, spike in sales of toys. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, let's look at the, the comic book. I, I think that's later on, but I'm going to mention it because it's relevant here. The comic book has not sold yet, but it's already surpassed traditional comic books it, it hit 100,000 pre-orders which automatically sets it to a second printing to cancel it now when you know, it's at its peak is the opposite of what a business plan is but yeah. there is that thing where people said um, go out on a high quit while you're ahead yeah those kind of things uh, yeah, yeah but I just don't I don't think they I don't think they've hit the peak yet I mean they're still we're not in Michael Bay territory okay <laughs> Actually, I, I asked Dusty for- Cat this question. Where do you think the pinnacle of the fandom is going to be? Hmm. Do you think we're there question. now? Do you think we've passed it? Or do you think it's yet to come? I don't know. We, the, thing, the problem with that, um, with answering that is, it's not sure because look at The Simpsons now. It's already at, what, season 21? So yeah, that's why I said it, it could be yet to come. I'm really not sure because is it something that is worth speculating over? Because I don't think so. It's worth speculating speculating over because it's kind of um, rumor mill stuff. We're not sure how it's going to work. And the thing is, um, how do I put this? If the ponies are going to last for 21 seasons, I bet the show crew are going to have a ball with it. But the thing is, story wise. It's a progression of the story, um, advancing the character's motivation and so on. And trust me, Michelle Kreber and Claire Corlett, they're going to grow up soon and their voice are going to change. So how would you deal with that? It'll be the 20 mark. <laughs> 20 mark, you say it's like that. Uh, do you remember Animaniacs and Skippy Squirrel? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, they, they kept him in the role, even though his voice changed dramatically. Yeah, I, I heard an interview with that because um, he, he they kept him in the role, but they also um, auto tune his voice to make it uh, squeak. Oh, did they? Yeah, I did they not did. Know that. They did. Well, like uh, I'm talking about, like oh, go ahead, fire. Burn, no, 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 please. Sorry, I rant. I was, no, I was rambling. Please fire away. No, I want to hear. <laughs> I was done. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. 
Uh, but yeah, I was saying, like, as far as like going out while the show is, you know, going out on a high note, I'm sure that the people who are directly responsible for the show would like to do something like that. But it's not up to them. It's up to the suits who want to run that thing into the ground. Um, I don't think that they, for any reason, will want to stop this show because it's making money. And only when it stops making money is when you stop making the show. Uh, now, I do think, you know, people freak out by the idea of the 13 episodes. But as far as Hasbro is concerned, it's like, well, this is making money. We can make less episodes, and we can reallocate these resources to see if we can, like, you know, strike gold again. And oh, so, continue, sorry. Yeah, well, the thing is that with 13 episodes, now this allows the creator of the show to, like I said, do more con- condensed awesomeness. Instead of, like, stretching, out, stretching for ideas to make 26 episodes, they can leave only the cream of the crop in these 13 Plus, it gives them a more chance to break up the season, so they have a, more of an even break in between, so we don't have a six-month hiatus until the next season comes out. So, would you say that it will run for season four, 13 episodes, season five, 13 episodes kind of deal? Would you think that? Yeah, I think that's going to be the new standard for it. Hmm, okay. And I think that is, uh, I completely forgot what I was going to say, mid-sentence. Oh, that sucks. No, but, uh, uh, you see, the the thing about I got <laughs> Hasbro, what I'm suspecting is going on in there is, do you notice how yesterday night, okay, um, Norman, you may kill me after this for bringing this up, but how after the episode, they straight away plugged the premiere for Little's Pet Shop? Not that They're great. also using a lot of the voice actors, too. Yes, and how That's it what you is do. a really good show. I mean, from, I watched one ep- I watched the first part and Philly had to close his live stream for some reason, but... um. I like it. it I, it's sold. I'm sold for the show. Hasbro just... investing in other shows as well to try and bring it to the same glory that My Little Pony was at. Okay, let's Absolutely. let's talk. It, it. Let's talk about that show here then, because from what I can tell, that show almost have the same writers, the same storyboard artists, and almost the same crew from Ponies. And I have to say that I watch a bit of it, and I'm really entertained, and I'm hyped for it. Hmm. Maybe so going, going back to the question, as I said, is Hasbro trying to do this investment to bring its other franchises up to the glory of My Little Pony? It could be. Absolutely. It could and it's be. just like with any other channel. If you have a strong show and you have a show you want to build up, it's called a lead-in. And you bring that show you want to support underneath your strong one. That's why, like in the past, uh, if you have a really strong show, you always want that spot right afterwards because you're going to get a lot of bleed over and lead into that. And uh, that's what they try and do to like promote new shows. If you see like any of the top ones, um, like uh, okay, like the biggest one, like I guess would be Big Bang Theory on CBS. Whatever no show they're trying to promote, they'll stick it right after that to try and get that that market to carry over. And of course, putting the same writing crew, acting crew, and everything, they're you know trying to get lightning to strike twice and get that same you know brony effect to happen for the mm. Pet Shop show. They tried with the uh, cameras earlier; it didn't did not catch on. Yeah. Because it was in 3D, that's why. Uncanny Valley. True, true. I don't know, I mean, from what I watch, and here's the thing, I watch it on Hex Mega, and on his stream, people were saying, oh, keep my uh, keep little special on, I want to watch. And another people said, no, we want to rewatch the season 3. They were, they were fighting that way, so, I mean, it, it was kind of interesting, because people are interested in it, mostly from the Brony fandom, and I... I have to say that it's interesting, like the show animation and the songs. What got me was the songs. Yeah, the songs are good. But anyway, um, pet shop. Yeah, pet shop. Oh, okay. You it's sh- worth a try, really. Yeah. It, Give it a well, shot. I did. I, I had to DVR it, so I've only watched the season premiere like about an hour ago. So. Yeah. It's cool. Anyway, I'm um, talking about season three. Let's move on to that one. Season three Yay. reviews. Yay! Yay! So I'm guessing we every. Okay, um, guys, we are going to spoil this show like mad, so I'll put in the show notes when you should skip. So do pay attention to, sh- to the show notes because spoilers are on now. So who here has watched the show? Everybody, I presume? I have. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you guys think of the animation? Excellent. It was way beyond what they did in season two. I don't think yeah, it was like silky so smooth. Yes, weapon. I honestly didn't notice much of a difference. Oh, there is, there is. If you I mean, notice, sta- the- we watch on standard definition, and I'm just, I'm still rewatching the high definition. I haven't finished yet, but it's, I haven't noticed any significant difference just yet. There is, you should, and 
it's basically not the animation in general, as in the quality, but it's in animation as in camera movement, angles, and work in, as in, sorry, details. They increase that a lot. It's, it's a lot of like, uh, like with Flash, a lot of it can be done with here's your static, here's your side view, here's your mouth movements, and then you tween it to give it an effect. They're starting to add a lot more unique animations and facial expressions and body movements without yeah. having to recycle those same things over and over again like you see in the like the walk the walking pattern that's a recycled animation they say this character needs to move throw that code in there and that character will walk they're relying on that stuff less and less and less and you can really see it twilight stood out so much at the season two finale she was totally like that well the other ones are still pretty static but for the season three premiere they were all updated True, true. Actually, now that you mentioned it, yeah, because I remember yeah. I was totally going head over heels when the, when T- Celestia used that crystal and did that whole preview of Crystal Empire dot AVI file going on on the, on the floor of the <laughs> Cantalot castle. Yeah, I mean, the animation has increased, and I have to say, it surprised me when um, I saw the eight minute preview for it, and I would agree. It, it's really good. Regarding those animation, you say it has improved uh, much better. How about giving specific examples of any specific scenes that uh, might illustrate this example so we get an idea of which part of it we're talking about? I think the song, the song scene where Twilight yeah. was standing on the castle. Yep. And the, the windy main stuff. Yeah, that that was, to me, that, that shocked me like hell. Like, oh my god, well, this is awesome. When? When did they do this? Uh, a really good example uh, yeah. is the is during the, uh, the the history song when they're all around the table and it's this panning shot of going around the table and seeing each one that they're all bobbing and looking around and their hair is all moving independently and also their faces are moving independently. There's a lot of there's like no static or hardly any like twin, there's no static or like overused stuff in that shot. Everything is totally fresh. It needed to do that angle of like turning around them. So you're seeing one shot of their head move around to the other side of their head while they're looking both ways and while the hair is moving. There is so much stuff crammed in that one shot. If you want to say how much goes in the work to animating that, look at that one like 10 second shot of that pan around the table. True. I think the philosophy for them now is if a fan can do what we do, we need to step up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So touch will ask the Crusaders kind of animation. Wow! Not even Crusaders. Um, Black Griffin. His work is awesome. Oh yeah, Black Griffin as well. Yes. So um, touch. You were saying? I wasn't saying anything. No, you you were going to say something before I cut you off. Did I? I cut. We're well, going to say something now, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal pony amnesia. Oh god, no. <laughs> we we'll save that talk for later. So anyway, uh, moving on to the whole storyline, um, Celestia got message from. Night Pony saying that the Crystal Empire is back. Night Pony. I Why don't is it like know. it has returned. No, it's deeper. It has returned. Mm. Princess Celestia, it has returned. <laughs> Manly <laughs> voice number one. <laughs> yeah, but overall, everything from what I noticed, the sh- storyline, what do you think? Because from what you said in your show last week, where Twilight was an Alicorn, everything, when you see it here, does it count? Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you, like, I was like, I shouldn't get hyped up because I know conspiracy theories are conspiracy theories are conspiracy theories, <laughs> and they're conspiracy theories. Oh. And it's like, well, as that we know of yet, so. Okay, moving on with the story, um, Twilight got called, and first scene, the tree jumped off the ground when oh, Twilight... Yeah. How? How? What? What? I mean... It, she was frustrated. I know it was meant as a joke, but my God, what did she do? You know when you're pissed, you tend to take everything to the extreme? <laughs> they bumped up the animation that they could do that. It's all yeah. about visual jokes now and how they want to impress people. And pillow armor is best armor. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. And the scene. Anybody wondered what Luna was talking about? Which part? What? 
after the whole t- intro song and Twilight has to go to Canterlot. Luna wasn't allowed to go to the Crystal Palace because then she'll have too much of a plot significance. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no, because no, Celestia already made the stained glass window with Twilight on it. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I saw that coming, yeah, on DeviantArt, and I was like laughing mm. my head off because I was like, I paid for this stained glass window already. Twilight has to be the one to do it. No one else can. Oh, <laughs> There's a stained glass window for everything, ain't it? Yep. Let me, uh, uh I'll just... You want, like, bananas and Celestia? Oh. I'll speak for, uh, Tetra here, like, Luna! <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your Luna, Tetra, is right there. <laughs> yeah. She just wasn't very pleased. Luna looks pissed off at Twilight. Any idea why? I thought they were best friends. Well, Luna's the badass, and Twilight's taken the badass responsibility away from her. Ah, so that's the reason why, eh? Okay, okay. I, That's why I say. She, either she doubts Twilight, or it's more like she thinks, okay, she's Twilight, but let's not put her into this. What if she fails, and maybe she has that thing that, I can do it, why don't you let me do it? Why don't you give the person who wants to do it to do it? Or just, you know, why do you have to, pay, why do you have to put it somewhere else in? Someone else in the picture. Well, I don't know. Maybe she's concerned about Twilight as well. And what is this test that they were talking about with Twilight? Is she ready? Is she doing tests? What is it all about? Born Twilight. Could be. Basically, no. we we, spin, we look through. Um, just let's run. Let's just run through um, some just some aspects. We start with the story, which was um, basically beginning in Ponyville, as always, almost and. Uh, we can move on right now. Maybe let's go to the music. What do you all think of the music of the show? Let's just go and explore little parts of it like that. Music's awesome. They were cute songs. It had a very Disney-esque feel to it. Uh, it was a twist episode. to the usual French Jewish magic music, if you ask me. There's a twist. Yeah, I can't, not I can't the wait for the remixes. <laughs> I think someone already did like a punk rock remix of the uh, prepared song. So. Oh yeah, as soon as it leaked. came out. Early leaks. So yeah, that came out very early. And um, any of you here who watched the spoilers? Yeah. Eight minutes? Yep. Yeah, okay. I did. So, with those eight minutes of spoilers in your head, mm-hmm. did the episode follow any of your anticipations? Well, technically, it followed the intro to the dot, so nothing was missing. No, I mean, it, you, you, we were all tense because it's a spoiler and it leaves you at a cliffhanger. You want to know what happens next. So, if you predicted something like maybe Twilight would fail or something like that would happen, no, or you know, never Shining because come out collapse in the snow or something like that. It's season one. No, the thing is, the eight minute preview is just eight minute in the beginning, so it's nothing special. But if you have seen other clips where it showed them in the snow, it showed pictures. I mean, if you look past beyond that, I don't know. I mean, technically, no. It it, it did the, watching the spoilers and looking at the season three premiere. Um, I, I, I have to say, um, it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the show at all. I would agree with that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think that scene, some of the, like, more of the speculation stuff, sort of, like, gave me, like, false perception of what the episode's going to be like and thing. Um, I kept trying to guess, like, what would happen next. And there's one part where uh, they're running, you know, the main six and uh, Shining Armor are running to the... Uh, the kingdom and everything that being chased by Sombra. Yep. And like, tw- uh, whoa, <laughs> you still there, Farmer? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. And uh, Shine Armor starts out to like, do the fight <clears throat> for a second there, and when he came back with the crystals on the horn and everything, I was like, is this going to be like a sort of like a role reversal from the season two finale that now Shining Armor is infected with Sombra and Sombra's going to take over and sort of be that body snatcher type thing like they did? Because that would have been cool. Oh. That that would be awesome, but no, nah, they didn't move it that way. But the thing is, yeah, why did <laughs> King Sombrero wanted to? Sorry, why did? <laughs> Not Sombrero, who's <laughs> that? <back>. Sombra. Sombrero. <laughs> anyway, um, why okay, did Sombrero is a Latino? It's official. <laughs> no, why did um, Shining Armor stood there and fight Sombrero off? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, no, that was a plot device because then he couldn't use his protection horn spell. Yeah, I mean, but still, if they would... He cast a massive force field around the whole cantalot, so basically, if he and Cadence team up, there won't be a show anymore. Yeah, okay. Well, pretty much because Shining Armor's a badass, and when you're a badass, you stand and fight. Yeah, unless you fail, like he did. Yeah, well... A lot. I, that's it. I don't know, it's, um... It's, I... 
I don't know if it's because I had like a, I've had a bad day today, but I was kind of like I was underwhelmed by the episode. I think I need to go back and watch it again because I was like when it was done, I was like, huh, okay. Everybody, you know, yeah, I know that's I know that's it, it's weird, but um, I felt like I was like I was wanting more out of it. You know, after the hype and speculation and stuff like that. Um, I wanted more of a Sombra because he was just a because he seemed like such a cool design and a, such a, a very uh, Joker esque, very you know, just that very he could have been that really cool. Fun fact character. about King Sombra, he is voiced by one of he is voiced by the lead uh, storyboard artist for what? My Little Pony. Sipsy? No, Sipsy is not lead storyboard artist. <laughs> Oh. Sounds like it was voiced by Sibsy's Subaru, more like it. Just a <laughs> give me a second. Give me right, a second. Now, now that you mention it, I have to look for his name because he is the lead storyboard. Give me a second. Uh, move on. Uh-huh. Move on to the. Oh. Yeah, probably, probably the time we do our podcast tomorrow, I'll have a completely different opinion of it. But because um, there's like, I felt like there's like part of it missing and I don't think it was a complete story like what was the test what was the test for hmm, I think that's a developing plot um, actually I, you guys oh, yeah go ahead no yeah because it seems like because she was like I failed the test and Celestia's like oh no you passed and she's like no she really screwed it up she was, should have done this differently you get that feeling from it yeah. um, and then they're at the very end Luna holds up this book oh, yes right. the book the book what was that book me, that's what sort of gave me hope, like, okay, maybe this isn't over yet, you know? I, well, I, 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 my theory is that that's Luna's checkbook because she lost the bet with Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> 50,000 no. pieces from the Royal Bank of Equestria. Okay, okay. Um, in, all, in all seriousness, I believe this is part of a larger story arc. In the beginning, um, Celeste mentioned specifically uh, that she is much closer to being ready, which we have no idea yeah. what that is about. Well, the and at the end... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Luna holds up the book, so Celestia looks at it approvingly, and we I roll the credits. So this is definitely foreshadowing to some sort of story arc, which, well... And if you guys thing. remember, right, when they blew up King Sambra, his horn is visibly shown blowing into the scene. Yeah, it is. Mm, or yeah, into the... He looked like he died. Yeah, but his horn. The horn is the key part, because remember what happened? It's kind of foreshadowing. Horn is his horn right. survives without him. Yeah. Crap. Oh, and it's, the uh, guy who voiced Sombra is Jim Miller. He's the storyboard artist for My Little Pony, and he also does voices for other characters and shows. And he's Tipsy's boss. Yeah. But it just seems like he's, it was such a cool design of the character, and it's such a cool idea. It, it, it's like when you see that like face in the smoke, it reminds me from Harry Potter, the skull in the sky with the serpent. It had that sort of effect to it. And I just think he was, like, taken out, didn't explain a lot of him, taken out way too early, and it's like, that cannot be the end of it. Uh, somebody uh, said earlier that Gat got more screen time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what is up with that? Because, I, like, like I said, I, I worked all day, and then I came home. I wanted to go to the gym, but it was closed, and that pissed me off. But uh, I come home, and I, like, I watch the episode, and I have DVR, so I just skip through all the... Commercials. Oh no, you and should I, not. You should not. The commercial is the part that <laughs> entertain us all. Actually, well, that's the thing the is, commercials I, I, is because we have a bit of discussion about that. <laughs> I stayed off Twitter a whole day so I didn't get one ruined and I stayed off all the websites. So I watched the episode, skipped the commercials, and I come and look at the community and all the people are talking about the commercials. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> and that was kind of, and that was kind of like disappointing for me. Kind of confirmed my feelings that I had. It's like, wow, everyone is so underwhelmed with the episode, like me, that they're more interested in the commercials. No, the, the, the thing is, it's like the gyro bull. It's like in every ad, the gag thing shows up like three times. And is that something about American TV? Do the ads recur like this all the time? Sometimes oh, the kids. No, but two or three times in every break. Well, the advertiser paid a lot of money to shift their stuff, so why not? I just want to let everyone know that I do own a gyro bowl. I do too. It's amazing. I'm not joking when I say I own a gyro bowl. And I used to have Gak when I was a kid, so. They're coming back, really? How long has their stuff been around? Dude, since the 90s. <laughs> wow. Personally, for me, I kind of love the glow in the dark tent. Yeah. That looks like fun. I'm back in the day of Play Doh. Uh, but anybody? Do you have a gyro bowl? 
I don't even know what that is. I don't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. We skip the ads. Uh, yeah, but anyway, um, I don't think he can send it to you. How old is your daughter still? Is she three? Right? She's I'm five. Oh, five. She still uses gyro. <laughs> <laughs> I will send you a gyro. I have no context to relate that with, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the discussion that we were having. Remember, we t- uh, you all said that you think it's a bit um rushed in a way that um maybe King Sombra didn't get enough screen time, kind of thing. Yep. Uh, there's one thing I also wanted to touch on is that do you what do you think of the plot flow and the narrative curve of this episode? I think it was really a bit rushed at its climax, just like some of the other old episodes as well. B, I, I mean, you told me yesterday night when you were watching it that you know it's most likely because it's a series; they have not enough time. They have to do; they have to adapt to it and they have to, you know, put within what they had. But Saber Spark tweeted right after the episode and said they should have done a three part. I mean, said, why not three part? What do you think? Well, three parter? Not really, because I don't know. With the, I didn't think there was enough. Well, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, always more episodes, good stuff. But I didn't see the. I felt the whole thing was. It wasn't like there was a rush bit because, like, I can see, like, when you look at the season two finale, it could use a three part. You have the build up, the, the fall, and then the the rise again. You know, talk of Star Wars, the New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. You could have that sort of effect, you know. And they kind of like cut out the middleman and just went straight to everything's good. Chris attacks defeater, and I guess you know. But for this episode, it was like I said, it felt like it, we were like missing something. The best way I can describe it, it's like uh, there's stuff missing, and I think as far as making a three episodes, to like I guess fill that in. But as far as the story arc itself, it completed what it did, but it just didn't feel complete. I think they're trying to build up the Crystal Empire first before um, making any before forgetting about it at all. Because if you look at it, it just brought up the Crystal Empire, and you have to remember, like I I think I discussed it on your show, but. They were gone for a thousand years. Luna was gone for a thousand years. So how does this relate? Yes, it's like there should be some kind of connection there. Or all magic kind of expires after a thousand years, maybe? Could be. Because they were all sentenced by spells and stuff. It was a King Sombra put a curse on the town. So it's like a thousand years is flowing in the magic. Could be. Could be. Uh, I do like that picture. Season one, redeemed. Season two, in prison. Season three, dead. <laughs> <laughs> and the horn, you can see the horn is still intact, like Norman said. Yeah, true. Anybody here remember the scene where Rarity was first appeared in the town? Is it the one where she was very excited? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Those were memorable scenes for her, man. Those were yeah. really entertaining. I think that's our CD review. So what do we... Just before... Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you were saying? So you, you go ahead first. So what do you guys want to give it out of five? I reserve the right to reboot everything Alpha says. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't give it a score. Like I said, I need to watch it again. Because I've... There's so many like great little things in there. And I, I... I guess I just need to be in a better state of mind to watch it. So I, I'll probably watch it again three or four times. And when we Are do you, our podcast... You gotta take. You gotta take and you gotta keep in scope here. They're not gonna do anything drastic with the outcome of the episode, even though they did the little twist in there with the completion. Um, you gotta appreciate the stuff like Rainbow Trolling Rarity. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And they go over. And they go over. You know. And you know. Hoof pumping. I, I don't even remember that. Check. What? Oh, so you okay? You need to watch it again. So anyway, yeah. Um, so like I, I, I think I, like I said, I'll probably. When we review it uh, tomorrow, we record Brony Time, available on iTunes, Stitchers, and on our website, bronytime.com. I'll probably have a better idea of how I feel about it. <laughs> but anyway, your first impression, what will you give it? I, 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 I'm going to re- hold. Because like I said, I'm, yeah, I'm missing out on stuff. I can't even remember that scene correctly. So uh, my, opi- my opinion this time is low, but I do not feel it's an accurate opinion. Oh, okay. So what about you five? Um, I, I think it was solid. I, like, I, like I said, I enjoyed the, the little um, relationship stuff, the, the friends being friends, you know, picking on Rarity and Pinky being Pinky squared. Um, yep. I love the little things like that. I mean, I didn't expect anything huge to happen um, toward the end true, true. with you know, the, re- the, the inevitable re- resolution because we'd heard about what you know, the third episode was going to be and it didn't seem like it played into the storyline here. Um, I would like more from Sombra. 
I would like more of a fight scene like you got in the Camelot wedding. Um, but I'm happy. I mean, it's, it's new pony. It's good pony. It's, it, you can tell they're building on something, but not like a continual story arc through all the episodes right now. So I don't think Sombra's gone. And enough little visual cues to make you go, wait, what's going on here? You know, Luna's book of them, you know, being almost cryptic at the beginning. True, so, true. I mean, for, yeah, for the, for, for the start of a season, I say four to five. Oh, okay, so what about you, Dan? I'm going at 4.2 because I'm, as I said, I'm still on kind of like first impressions, very light because I've already watched it one and a half times. I'm still halfway through the second watch. But mm-hmm. um, as um, as I told you just said, it's a lot of those little things that made it made it really work. Like, especially the part where they brought back things from the previous seasons, like the party canon was one. But as when Twilight met Cadence and they went, sunshine, sunshine, I was jumping up and down screaming because I love that line. <laughs> okay, so Niels, what about you? What do you think? Uh, First impressions. Okay. First impression. Well, to be quite honest, I have seen all the spoilers, so I kind of like saw the whole episode before it aired, and well, it, it kind of met like expect. I kind of expected what was going on, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't really give it a great score. Uh, to be honest, I think three out of five. But mm-hmm. the caveat is, uh, we are just at the start of the season, so I'm looking forward to uh, many more great episodes and. Uh, I didn't look up all those synopsis I read. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, three out of five for the starting, and I hope to go higher as the season goes by. Okay. What about you, Tosh? Um, I would actually give it like a three point five, maybe, because I don't know. I I guess like everyone else, I was expecting a bit more, and just wanted more in terms of like storyline was moving all right everything was great but it just felt like there was something else missing I really can't put my finger on what it is but it felt like yeah I just wanted something a bit more to give it that extra thing that made it like wham bam thank you ma'am that sort of thing you know mm, okay personally for I me think, sorry go ahead yeah personally for me I would give it at a 4 a solid 4 out of 5 because mm. it's okay not to say great like previous I think the one shot episodes like um Lesson Zero, Lunar Eclipse, they were okay, but this one, it was it was good. It was good. Um, I kind of love the visual gags, the reference to old stuff, and one thing that got me was the gravity spell that Twilight was uh, Twilight did at the near the end. Like that was cool. She said, "I studied for this. I guess I was prepared." <laughs> Those kind of lines make me ah, that's so funny. <laughs> I think uh, it's going to be, it might be one of those shows, episodes seem better in retrospect, when we see how the entire thing plays out, if there is a tie-in, and then they go back and say, oh, remember all that stuff that we missed or thought about, you know, it's so, yeah. we'll see how it will, if it's a part of a greater scheme. True, true. I personally think that there is much, that now that this kind of episodes are up, and I had a similar feeling when it came to the season two finale, even though I love the season two finale, I also felt that it could have more. So what I'm thinking is there is extreme potential right now for a movie. Hmm. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Yes, the, now the, 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 the potential is now at an, almost an all-time high because they can use a lot more screen time for everyone. They could use a much longer, more developed narrative curve and a movie is definitely something that would be, should be in store. Okay, that's awesome. We'll keep that in mind. So anyway, moving on to the next topic. It's guest time and this week we have Brony time. So, Brony hey. time. Guys, Alpha, uh, Five Iron, want to introduce yourself to the guys who don't know who you are? Sure. Yeah, if you, in case you didn't recognize who's been uh, stealing this podcast away, I am Alpha, The and this is Five Iron. We're the host and co-host, or the co-host, however you want to say it, of Brony time. We talk ponies. Yeah. And we talk with other po- bronies about ponies in a panel format TV show, or panel podcast. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the idea. We are uncensored, so uh, if you have sensitive little ears, uh, we're not shock jocks, I'll say it that way. We don't go extreme, but we don't censor ourselves. Uh, what might get you yayed on this show will slip by on our show, so. Because we're both adults, so we talk like adults. Okay, so. That's cool. So let's move on to Q&A. And how did you guys get started? Coercion. Do you want to start? Um, sure. Um, 
Alpha asked me to be on the podcast. So I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> short. <laughs> What a story. Okay. So what happened was, <laughs> is that uh, I was, uh, I started on, on the, uh, you know, became a brony as well too. And uh, I it's really didn't have a lot of way to connect with a lot of people. Uh, I would try and like the uh, Equestria Daily uh, chat room and stuff like that. And uh, they would like get pissed off if you made any sort of comment that was PG-13 or up. Not that I would like, was trolling or anything, but if I let something slip or thought, uh, common was innocuous enough. I think the one that did it for me was like there was this thing going on where this girl was role playing as Pinky Pie and hit on this other guy, and I said, "Hey, it's like Fifty Shades of Pink," and the mods like blew up over that because like don't make adult references. Ouch. I was like, "Okay, come on, guys." Uh, that was ridiculous, but I really didn't have a way to interact with anybody. And then uh, I am a fan of the uh, the Bronyville podcast, and they were on this thing that if you signed up on Twitter and followed them, then you would be entered for a contest. And I was like, you know what? What the hell? It seems like a lot of people are on Twitter. I will set up a Twitter account that will be completely brony-related and everything. And that's what I did. Uh, started connecting with other bronies. And Five Iron was the first person to follow me. I don't know why you took pity on my poor soul. <laughs> had, had I but known. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But we sort of like started talking and sort of bantering back and forth and stuff. And uh, I, I liked, uh, I just want to get my voice heard because I thought I had a different uh, perspective being a older brony with a family. And also the fact that I was just tired of the censorship because it's like, you know, the whole idea of bronies is we're adults who like this show. So why don't we act and talk like it? And I hit up Five Iron and say, hey, I was thinking about doing this. Do you want to be on? And... What did you say, Fire? And you're like, yeah, I can do that. Um, or, I, yeah, it sounds about right. What's yeah, pretty much. I think I said, let me think about it first. But then, like, you know, 20 minutes later, I'm like, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the way it went. And so we just went in, uh, like, full steam into it. Uh, we decided we want to take ourselves seriously. So, like, we're getting a website, we're getting emails, we're going to get syndication up, and, like, sort of, like, went, like, just trying to professional straight out the gate. And we didn't want to ask for anyone's help either because we didn't want to say, hey, how do you do an RSS feed, even though I hate it? And <laughs> so we uh, just, like, started yeah, us. God, I, I still don't understand it. But we got the show up and running and everything. And uh, it's been doing really well. We decided, you know, if it crashes and burns, and it does, and we gave it our, you know, darndest and uh, tried. But now we're uh, it's listened to in over 30 it just passed. How many downloads? Are we, we're over 2,000, are we? Or, like, we're close. No, no, I think we're... I th the last time I looked, we were around... I think we're over 1,400 right now, which... I mean, yeah. So that's fun. I mean, it's, it's better than I thought it was going to do. Yeah. So it's fun. So we're... And, of course, we've had you guys on there, and you've been tons of fun as well, too. So that's us and our little yeah. podcast. And, and we'll see you again cool. tomorrow. Last thing. Yeah, we'll be on tomorrow. I'll, well, at least I'll try, because... Ah, uh, time zones. I hate time zones. So, anyway, um, who inspired you to do a podcast? Uh, for, for me, it was the, the, uh, the Bernieville guys. Yeah, hmm. same here. I mean, there was, uh, there was my sort of, like, first uh, connection with the fandom. Because I was looking for, like, I had, like, a Stitcher, and I was like, well, let me see if I can find bronies. I found another brony podcast. I was like, well, this sucks. I'm not going to say who it was, because that's rude. <laughs> but, uh... I found them, and I was like, listen to them, and they thought they were really professionally done, and they thought I had good input, and that's what I was kind of like, you know, I gotta, I have stuff to say, and I think I can say it pretty well, so it sort of inspired me to launch my own podcast. Okay, cool. Daniel, got any questions? Um, yeah, because, uh, how do you say, you all have um, started and got it up and running really, really fast. If I'm not mistaken, you're on, um, what's that service again for podcasting? Stitcher. No, oh, Stitcher, the one that they're running on. Uh, sorry, do you want this Lipsen? revealed or not? Lipson, yes. Yeah, Lipson. Uh, sorry, do you want? Uh, are you comfortable with this being revealed or? Yeah, it's fine. I don't okay. Care. Do you care? Yes. So, um, basically, uh, did you run into any challenges on the way when you were starting this whole thing, in terms of technical stuff and in terms of other things as well? Technical. Well, what else? I have that one. Yeah. <laughs> this is five irons. Like, I'll draw the pictures and you make it work. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, cause. <laughs> I used to do stack and, yeah, exactly. But uh, I tried to do an RSS and I just tried to do it myself because I have our own server that we run off of. So if you go to bronytime.com, that it's all you know done with WordPress. And uh, I was glad because WordPress seemed like pretty neat. It sort of did itself, and I was cool with that. 
uh, but I tried loading the stuff on the server and trying to do RSS codes, and I did the RSS codes perfectly, but it never worked, and then sometimes it didn't work on Chrome, or sometimes it didn't work on Firefox, and it's, it was just pissing me off, something fierce. Uh, sometimes the player wouldn't work, and uh, I was, like, getting frustrated with it. And um, I was like, you know what, let's try this Libsyn thing, you know, it's worth a shot. Plug it in, and then it worked instantly. I was like, you son of a... <laughs> it's like, it made it so much easier. Um... <laughs> And it's nice, too, so it just does all the coding stuff for you. Uh, putting the podcast together can be a bit of a pain, though, because what I have to do is I have to build a post on WordPress, then copy that over from Libsyn so the details of the show work. So if you go to like us on iTunes or whatever, it'll say the show description, and so you have to make sure that's transcribed. So you put that on Libsyn, publish it, then take the code out for the podcast, and then put it back in the WordPress. So it takes a bit. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow, that, so that's a lot of work. Yeah, um, I'm probably doing it the most horrible way possible, and <laughs> someone can listen to this and say, I can fix that in five seconds, and I bet you could. So, But one of the things I want to do is I didn't want to ask for help, because I didn't want to be the guy who was like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be awesome. Can somebody do this for me? And I didn't want to. <laughs> I thought that'd be Actually, really crap. is Libsyn an all-in-one solution kind of thing? They are. They do have their own like website, so if you want to use their website, they have a simple website builder tool you can use. Uh, but I decided to use ours because I liked it better. Uh, and they, it, It's good. If you're looking at doing podcasting, it definitely helps because um, it does. It puts it into a RSS format, so it can be put on iTunes, so it can be put on Stitcher, or you could just like put that code into anything else so people can listen to it. So it it's, definitely makes it easier. And plus they have awesome stat trackers. That's how we're able to know that we're see nation uh, worldwide because it shows where it's cool and I love statistics I, uh, like a marketing major and I love the uh, economics and all the graphs and everything and I think that's so amazing because you can go into like different sectors of the world and see where everything's coming from and uh, you can so it's how long someone listened to a specific show and things like that so it's fun to try and figure out the algorithms of uh, listeners and see who we're winning over who we're not and what's good and what's bad and where our reach is going to so Okay, so guys, you you mentioned Libsyn, and is it a paid service? Yes, it is. Uh, and that's why we accept donors. <laughs> so how much is Libsyn? How much is Libsyn? Depends. Well, there's different. Yeah, there's different services. There's um, you can I think you can go as low as five bucks a month if you want to do like maybe one upload every two weeks or one upload every three weeks, and. It'll go up to like seventy five dollars a month if you need like just ridiculous amounts of um, uh, space, space. And bandwidth kind of thing. Yeah. Thankfully, hmm. but, we don't. Uh, what about your site? Is that site hosted by Libsyn or do you have a separate WordPress site? We have a separate WordPress site. Uh, our hosting for our website is done through One on One. They're really good guys. Uh, it's funny because I used to do tech support for Network Solutions. And their pricing and stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> so it's like we picked out the competition. I was like, holy crap, how is our company still in business? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I don't longer work with them. So I was like, when I had to make this, like, do I want to go with my old employer or do I want to go with someone new? And I went with someone new. But one uh, on good. They have us, so they, we have a hosting package through them. That gives us the domain. It gives us the emails. And it gives us the website. So how much space do y'all have? Uh, it's unlimited, actually. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so if you're looking for, like, web space, check it out. Um, and one-on-one, -on -one, if you love all this advertising I'm doing for you, we are accepting donations for our show, which is hosted <laughs> by you guys. So if there are any bronies who work at one-on-one, -on -one, pass the message on, because we'd love some support. <laughs> Same thing for anyone who works at Lipson, So Awesome, but, awesome. It was cool because, uh, like, I knew enough about hosting and stuff because I had my own website beforehand. So that technical aspect wasn't that difficult. So I knew what we needed to get done, um, which I think helped us out because uh, we sort of came out the gate prepared and properly set up. So when people saw it, it we looked legit and were doing things right, well, which I think legitimized us a bit. I have to say, um, your website when you first came out, it was impressive. It looks good. It was. It, let's just say that I'm impressed and I'm jelly at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, your happy. show note format, how do you came up with that one? Well, like, uh, as far as me, it's like, I, 
I want to do podcasting, but there was things I liked and didn't like about a lot of podcasts. I do have like a couple different favorite ones, um, both Brony and non Brony related. And uh, I remember reading this article about like what's why podcasts are horrible is what it was. And it's, here's the things that make a bad podcast a bad podcast. And um, I started, before I really got the idea of making my own, I started listening to the ones I liked to see what made them good and the ones I didn't like and see what made them bad. And then see what made the good ones bad and bad ones good to see the things. And uh, pretty much what I discovered or made for myself was that um, the fact that they can go on for as long as they need to was a thing that can be a detriment because you never know if you're sitting down for a 30-minute show or a two-and-a-half-hour show. Like this one is. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, and but, you know, it's not to say it's a bad thing, but there's some stuff that can turn people off to podcasts. Um, and then I, I want it to be something different than like a couple of guys sitting around. And the idea of like what I saw with like Bronyville and also with yours, the idea of editing it together intros and stuff so it's not just here sit down turn on the mic and now you have a couple guys just talking non-stop which i've heard is like there's a mic in the center of the table there's four guys sitting around it levels are horrible there's no editing um there was one i heard that it started off with the guys sitting down a bag of taco bell and handing it out and eating as they were doing the podcast i was like why do you think people want to hear that um much 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 huh I guess the eating sounds coming out, is it a crunch and all that? Oh yeah, it was horrible, and they were commenting about it, like it was good or not. And I was like, that's such a waste of my time, you know. And uh, the one podcast I really do like is the Freakonomics podcast. And if you listen to that, there's a lot of heavy editing and there's a lot of transitions and stuff, and it sounds like you're watching a TV show. And I think that was the thing that clicked for me. And I decided to do the podcast to be styled after uh, the uh, show Real Time with Bill Maher if anyone knows that show on HBO hmm. or, or not, I guess not. So <laughs> you're all international, but anyway, it's this, it's a political talk show that's on HBO. And, um, that's kind of where we got the name to Brony time. It's kind of play off of that as well, but it's an idea of an hour long talk show where they have um, a skit monologue thing, interview, and then a panel where they discuss political topics. And I liked that setup and I figured that's what we need to do. Um, we're going to take it uncensored, so we can talk about whatever we want to. We're going to edit it together so that it has the transition so it flows like you're listening to a TV show with music intro, and then they have the music as they like walk over to the guests and set up for the transitions, and then also keep it within that hour timeline. So if something has to be said, you want to make sure you get that stuff in as fast as you can to also sort of make it more heightened and engaging as well. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, I think it's been a success, and it's seemed to work. Uh, we really haven't altered our format pretty much all since we started. It's been pretty much good to go, and uh, I think that stands a testament to it. So I oh, enjoy it. Okay. I mean, uh, from what I listened and been on, I like the format, and it's uh, well, it's interesting. Like, um, yeah. what, what else good can I say about it? Like, it, it's just good. It's just good. Um, Thank you. So, who edits the podcast? That'd be Five Iron. So, Five, um, how do you edit the show? Very carefully. <laughs> no, I um, I, I use um, uh, Audacity. And, Yay for Audacity! Uh, oh, I love that program. I don't know what I would do without it. Um, but I usually either will take suggestions on, on you know music and such, or I'll just you know, grab whatever's free out there on, on YouTube and try and remove any of the you know noises like that. Oh, um, <laughs> as best I can. <laughs> If I talk myself into a corner, he'll cut that out too. <laughs> <laughs> On occasion, you know, the last one I didn't have, hardly have to cut anything at all. It was just like, there was a little bit of dead air that I removed. But last time, it was mostly just you know, intro music, news, what is it, how do we do it? transition, interview, transition, panel, outro, and done, which was really yeah. great. <laughs> and the- sort of do it too is because uh, like I said we try and keep on a time constraint even though we don't need to we think it sort of adds to a sense of urgency with the, uh, st- uh, with the conversation so we both have timers going I have a timer that tracks uh, how long the show is so we I stop the timer when we go to breaks to bring people on the panel and everything but as far as we're live that ticker's running so I make sure to keep the show within it and then Five Irons also has another 
clock that goes nonstop. So if we need to cut something, he can write down that time code so that when we go back to edit, you can say, there's the cut, there's the cut, there's the cut, and smash it all together. And that's how we're able to put out an episode within 24 hours of recording. So mm, it's been pretty so, Wow. That, that is a good tip to run on. Huh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I suggest that. Stopwatches for everyone. So it's just for everyone, indeed. Oh boy. So anyway, um, I'm searching, searching through like an hour, like where's that one ten second clip I need to cut out? <laughs> what so, yeah. Anyway, um, news. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Actually, I've been curious. We've been calling, <laughs> um, <coughs> Abroni and Five Iron, but I've always wondered why. Why did you guys choose the name? How did the name come about? Go on, you go. Right. Dang it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right, who's going? You or me? You go first, because I like putting you on the spot. Okay. All right, fantastic. Um, I like uh, a type of music called ska music, and my absolute favorite band of all time is called Five Iron Frenzy. Oh. And, uh, and then I just got, I got grabbed that and went with it. Um, so, very boring story, <laughs> but accurate. So it's based off a band? Yeah, kind of. I no, always no, thought no. it was the golf club. <laughs> no, I hate golf. <laughs> I, uh, I played golf twice in my life, and both times it devolved into playing who can hit the ball the furthest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the game is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Oh, okay. What about you, Alpha? Like, Alpha Brun. Well, I can see, like, when I first... Five Iron. I first met Five Iron. I knew this from the band because um, I know Five Iron Frenzy. I was like, "Oh, cool, it's Scott fan." So, anyway, uh, for me, uh, I was uh, I, I kind of made my name as sort of like a joke. Uh, it's it's like a triple entendre, really. I uh, uh, when I first came in the fandom, I was like, uh, I was trying to think of like what I wanted to do for the fandom as well. And I know everyone has that sort of like idea of as far as like bronies and nerds in general as being like weak and scrawny and like out of shape and everything. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm like a, I'm going, I'm a bodybuilder and everything. So I was like, um, and I'm like six foot five and I, <laughs> I weigh like two sixty five, and I'm like, and I was like, I'm like almost like the alpha brony, you know, as a sort of like a sarcastic, you know, joking about it. And I thought I was going to do like a, sort of like a workout uh, routine for bronies until the one guy came out and did the uh, the Brony weight loss group or the Brony health group, whatever it's called now. And I was like, well, I guess that kind of takes care of me. Plus, I kept injuring myself. <laughs> so I was like, I, and the names just sort of stuck because I was doing it in the chat rooms and I just kept saying Alpha Brony. So it was kind of done as to be, uh, and also I was so late to the fandom as well. Like I said, it came like halfway through the second season. So it's kind of a joke to say like I'm the first Brony, which I'm totally not. <laughs> and then... Um, and I'm, I'm really a nice guy, but I always thought that kind of like jerky, like, yeah, alpha baby, you know, that sort of like, that sort of meathead idea, which I thought was kind of funny because I'm totally not that type of person. So it was kind of fit. I will crush you. I uh, know. <laughs> so, Apparently he yes. will assassinate you. He's an assassin. <laughs> exactly. But and so it's kind of like, the, I, I thought it was kind of funny. Even though I was the only one who got the joke, I decided to stick with it, so. <laughs> I actually kind of saw that because you you did mention it on your own show a couple of times like uh, the words Alpha Brony and I'm like are you talking about yourself? Oh wait <laughs> yeah. I see what you did there Clever very clever <laughs> In my mind it was clever so it, and I'm stuck with it <laughs> but I, I like it That's well done it's, yeah. I mean it fits well with you too because you got Alpha is which is one and Five Iron is a digit number so it kind of it kind of works. I didn't even First think together, dude. Power Rangers. Yay! Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! You know, uh, 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 Jason Frank. He's a badass now. Oh, oh yeah. He he's very alpha, if you would. <laughs> yep, he's the Alpha Ranger. Alpha <laughs> Ranger. <laughs> oh god, no! Alpha Five, no! Hey, wait! Alpha oh, and Five. <laughs> Yes, Alpha Five. That's that's what I said. Mm. Holy crap! Ay, 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 ay. Oh, that hit me, man. Oh gosh. You know what? And also that uh, now everything fits when you say what time is it? It's Brony time. Yeah, and it always goes like to the Power Ranger theme song, huh? Oh, 
same time. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you now. Oh. Hey. We need to change the names now. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can't, that once you're in the fandom, it's like if you, you try and change your name, it's just starting over and I have intentions. That's yes. what happened to us. Just switch it, you know? Alpha Iron and Five Brony or something like that. <laughs> Five Brony. <laughs> I do like that we both use Brony in our names. So I'm like Alpha Brony, Five Iron Brony, no relation. So. <laughs> but anyway, um, Tash, you got any questions? I do, yeah. I do have one question. I'm just wondering, how do you guys go about picking what topic to discuss on your panel? Like, I know you get suggestions um, and stuff as well, but how do you go... Like actually deciding on what to talk about. Well, the the panel, the topics are really more of a guideline. Uh, we we've we've skipped more topics than we've actually talked about. Yeah, just because yeah. of the way the conversation would flow. Yeah, we first we started off picking like, okay, here's like stuff to talk about that we throw it in there, uh, and it just it seemed to start and stop, and uh, I we kind of I got the uh, the epiphany. Just we're like, well, you know, the thing because we're going to run out of stuff to talk about. You know, you can only ask, you know, who's the best pony so many times. Uh, and I figured it was like we need to, uh, since we do the news at the top of the show, it's like, well, let's take those news topics and bring that in the panel. So we talk about something to begin the show, and then we get back with the panel. Now that it's people, because the people who are in the panel, we are are sort of in the green room. They're muted so they can hear the entire show that's going on without them. So when they finally get to jump in, they have an idea of what's already been talked about, and then we would bring that topic back up. Then it's like, okay, here's my opinion, and now we have something to talk about, really. And then if we run out of stuff, we do have, like, random topics um, uh, to sort of, like, fall back. Yeah, segue. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> so we have stuff to keep going. So, but especially like in the like previous two episodes, we've we haven't even had to rely on our topics anymore just because the conversation keeps going. So. Oh yeah, I remember those. I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the reasons the topic never on. Like you're supposed to. <laughs> I know. Like I said, when you have a Malaysian on, the show never ends. Exactly. Yeah, now you have flair. Now you have three on the four on this one. It's gonna be like infinity. Oh god, no! Anything's gonna be hell. Yeah. But anyway, um, we don't have how, to do it. <laughs> so anyway, um, how do you get your panels? We ask nicely. Lot, yeah, lots of asking. Hmm, that's interesting. Like, um, Flair. Ask, he's, ask nicely. True. I mean, Flair is an interesting character. I have to say, like, he is an interesting character, and uh. Like I told Five Iron, he reminded me of this one other podcast host, and um, most of them are really cool. So uh, you just ask nicely? No no relations, no nothing? Well, no. Uh, a lot of the guys who start off with are like friends of ours, like Flair knows Five Iron, um, and a couple other people from Carolina, uh, um, Sam or Random Brony Post. Uh, I know from Twitter, Logan is actually up here in Pennsylvania. I know him from Twitter as well. So it's kind of like um, asking our friends to be on. And that was kind of the other aspect of the show that we wanted to do is because it seems uh, when you get some of these other podcasts, it's always like, here's a well-known community member talking to another well-known community member. And it's like, well, what about all the other like thousands and thousands of us who are sort of sitting on the sidelines? And so what I want to do is like, we'll interview that person because they obviously are known for a reason or have something special or a project they're working on but then we want to bring them in and talk to just uh, the everyday average brony and have a discussion with it so we start off with like just asking our friends and such and uh, i'm glad to have like tetron as the first guy which is cool as well and uh just to get a chance to, like, people from, like, sort of all levels of the fandom come together to talk. And then our panel is open to anyone who listens to the show. So if you listen, if you want to be on, we have a, a uh, form. interview or request form for you to, like, uh, sort of fill out and tell us about yourself to qualify to be on the show. So it's not some uh, elite club of people who can be on the show. It's anyone can be on. Uh, you have a rule of 18 plus, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's about pretty much our... Our only rules are you have to be 18 years older, uh, you can't be a jerkwad, and you have to have a decent mic and uh, headset system so you don't so you don't sound garbled. Oh. And then so pretty much the idea is like because uh, we like I said we're, we we can talk about adult topics and stuff can swing into stuff and we don't want to have like 
sign up forms for adults and everything like that, and consent forms. And Basically, you don't want little Timmy to get hurt. <laughs> exactly. So we're uh, we, and we don't want to get ourselves in trouble. Like have some kid who's like sixteen may be able to say everything, and he says a bunch of crap. It goes online, and, and his parents find out, and now all of a sudden we're the ones who are in trouble. We're not going to get wrapped up in that at all. So. Oh, okay, Your tagline should be "Don't say we didn't warn you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> okay. So, um, Dan, mm-hmm. any questions? No, I'm done. I'm good. Oh, that's rude. What? <laughs> we called them on to ask them questions, and you got no questions. That's rude. You want me to call with questions right now? I can. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold on. I got, I got one. I got one for Dan. Oh, go ahead. Have you written those? Have you written those lyrics yet? <laughs> Oh, great. Not That's yet. Enough. I'm sorry. Really terribly busy. I'm, I'm, pick, I'm picking. I'm picking. Don't worry, man. I've had a, oh, a busy week, too. I'm just messing But it's, my, no it's currently the break because there are two celebrations coming up in uh, Malaysia right now. So I'm, I, have, I have a week off. Better do it, I, Philly. I mean, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been sketching a little bit about it. It's in my notebook, but I haven't managed to finish it. Uh, don't worry. Okay. No worries. Okay. You, you should be like, well, why don't you write it? Like, I can't write. So that's so why I give it to you. <laughs> We do have a writer on. Tash, you think you can take up the challenge? Challenge accepted. Oh, you haven't heard of it yet. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Seriously. Loud noises. <laughs> what is the challenge? Uh, okay, so the challenge is this. I, ha- I had this idea for um, uh, a Brody song. I heard Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror and I thought, wait a minute. That song was about change and doing good things. I thought, wait a minute, there's a correlation between that and Luna. And I thought, ah, Mayor in the Mirror. And um, so, yeah, uh, I am a lousy writer. I'm not a musician. Most, but most days I can't even play an MP3. So I'm trying to find someone who can do that. Oh, I guess I never told you about my uh, Brony rap cover songs that I've done, huh? Ooh. I think I'm feeling you're going to, though. <laughs> I, I think I just did. <laughs> I've had a no, couple, but, like, they're all in my head. I haven't put them down to paper, but I got a couple of songs that I've, like, well, I just did right there, like, Jay-Z's Dirt Off Your Shoulder, like, Bronify It, and a couple other songs that I've listened to. It's like, I could fit ponies in there, <laughs> and I've done it just to amuse myself. I, I had uh, chatted with uh, some of the guys over at Alicorn Radio, and one of them mentioned that their wife was on board for doing the voice. Um, so the, uh, when I saw that, I was like, hey, damn. What you doing, buddy? <laughs> so, because um, there's nothing cooler than a white guy rapping. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yes. We need more and more of that. Nothing. Oh, wait. There is an Asian guy rapping. No, oh, hey, sexy lady. Oh God, no. White guy. That's not Asian rap. Guy collab. Oh yeah. Uh, so anyway, Tasha, you think you can do it? I think I could. Yeah, I could totally do it. All right. Cool. So let's accept it then. <laughs> Round two challenges have to yes. <laughs> anyway, so guys, you said you were married. So how has uh, Bruni? Not to each other. <laughs> yeah, you made that misconception last night. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, you just only told me about them. So like you said, you said that uh, they were married. So I, I said, said oh, they yeah, were okay. both married. I didn't say they were married. <laughs> <laughs> how did we turn yeah. up here? Alpha, I now appreciate your no relation comment so much more. Thank you. See? <laughs> yeah. throw that in there. Okay, let me Probably rephrase that. You're quite stallion, my good man. <laughs> <laughs> let me rephrase it. So, you're both married to your respected wives. So, how has Brony Life been treating you since you were married and Brony Life and podcasting? How has that been doing for you guys? Fiverr, you want to take that? Or? Yeah, five I answer. Yeah. You you haven't talked about you haven't talked much. Oh, yeah, I talk okay. too much. Or do you want me to speak for us? <laughs> um, don't you usually do that? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, I, I can I, see I, where I, this I, relationship I is going. I do not mind being background pony. I am comfortable here. Um, <laughs> talk a little bit about it. Um, I it, it's it's. I mean, when when you remove yourself from the Brony fandom and you think grown man watching cartoon intended for a little girl red flags going up everywhere um, but the best argument I've heard for this uh, is probably from Alpha when he talks about Pixar it's like is it a good show? Well then enjoy it um, 
again, my wife knows I'm kind of strange, so there wasn't a whole lot of backlash. Plus, I had the whole you know smoke screen of I'm watching it with my daughter. <laughs> then I was like, I really like this show. <laughs> yeah, I had that too. I was like, <laughs> but it's um, I mean, like I'm an animation fan, so me and my wife actually met at an anime convention, so we're not strangers to each other's nerdiness. <laughs> um, but it's been uh, it's been good. I mean, because uh, I started watching her first. And she heard about it, and I kind of like joking, really, there's guys watching this, and then she got into it, and she still likes to rip on me, because she can do that. That's just how our relationship is, because uh, we like to poke fun at each other and roast each other pretty good. But uh, I think one of the best things that's come out of it, as far as being a family man, is uh, with my kids, because uh, my son really enjoys the show. He's four, but he gets a kick out of it. You know, he has his own derpy stuff, because he loves derpy. Uh, so, and um, it's cute. I got one of those like vinyl derbies from Hot Topics, and he loves it, so it's cute. He said, I love you, Derby, and gives it kisses, so that makes me happy. And uh, then my daughter is like, is Twilight Sparkle and Carnet? She loves ponies, and it's been something that we can really, uh, we've really bonded over as well, and we our relationship has become uh, a lot closer. Uh, and because now she's growing up, she's 13, and now she's getting into middle school, and which is merged with the high school where we are. And so she's kind of getting that age where, you know, parents aren't cool anymore, but we still have a pretty tight relationship and hang out a lot. And I, it, I, I don't know, I'm waiting for the day where she gets all pissed off and like hates me like all teenage girls are supposed to do. But for this point, it's been uh, really good. And I, uh, I am definitely really appreciative of the show and what it's done for us. So. Well, it's th- awesome. That's an interesting point of view because usually when we have guests, they're so young or single. Uh. They're all uh, single, I think. And then, um, I actually thought, so from your daughter's point of view, really, what I wonder what, you know, people think of, you know, that their parents are bronies and they're not kind of thing. No, maybe not your daughter, because your daughter is kind of into the show already, but let's just say if somebody's a brony and their kid is not a brony. What would, well, that, that's... What would that imply, really? And I think it'd be like, Dad, cut it out! Kind of thing happening going on. I could see that happening. And Stop it's a matter embarrassing of like, me. Yeah, and I try and embarrass her sometimes when we go to, because she's on the flag team. Uh, she's the the color guards. So she's one of the flag girls. So me and my wife will like to do the uh, the obnoxious parent, like, "Honey, hi, we're waving to you. Smile, we're taking pictures of you and your friends." And we do that jokingly. <laughs> sunshine, and she, it's, sunshine. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, uh, you know, she knows we're like doing a caricature parent things, and so she gets the joke of it. Uh, but I can see that if you were a brony and she wasn't, then that would be, uh, it would be like a, an embarrassing factor because your parents are, your parents are made to embarrass you. I don't think no matter what I did, even if I was just a, still an anime comic book fan like I am, I don't think the ponies would have saved me anymore if she wasn't kind of nerdy as well. So, Is she gonna listen so to yeah, this? it's like, what? Is she going to listen to this? Probably, uh, I'll tell her. <laughs> I don't let her listen to my show, so. Oh God, no. <laughs> Has she, PG-13 one, so. <laughs> has she discovered your show? Uh, she knows about it, so. And she asked me about it and stuff like that, and so. She knows we're out there, so. Does she have any, like, brony classmates, for that matter? Uh, she actually, she knows of a couple kids who are. Uh, she doesn't, like, know them directly, but she saw someone walking around with, like, a, like a Fluttershy shirt beforehand, and she made a, what was this? She made, like, a comment, heard someone, like, answer back. Uh, like a quote from the show. So there's Rock. a couple of kids. I think it's something like that. And so there, there are a couple of brony kids running around, but she hasn't like brought them home or like actually knows who they are personally. So, but they're always welcome to our place if they ever do come over. So, as long as they stay away from my daughter. So. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So anyway, um, you you'll have a good time talking to each other. You know, it's like. Oh, hi, wait, you're a brony? Oh, come cool. on, let's go out for drinks on that. <laughs> it's funny because we and my daughter hang out. We'll both put on our pony shirts. I'll put on my derpy shirt. She puts on her lunar shirt, and we go paint the town, so. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, you got any more, you got any other questions? Yes, yes, I do. All right. Uh, actually, um, by the sounds of it, like, uh, you guys are typically the uh, older spectrum of the fandom. So when you go out for, like, to meet other people, for conventions, um, how about you share some stories about the reactions you get from uh, people in public and stuff? It's, uh, well, Fire Iron, have you done anything? Or he's pretty solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, there was actually a meetup uh, about 
an hour and a half away from me today, but I did not make it there. I have yet to be to my first official Brony meetup. Oh, all right. Yeah, I know it's sad. Um, Is that one that was run by Obey and Fluttershy? Yeah, yeah, they did a uh, they did something over at uh, NC State today. I think from three till nine p.m. or something along those lines. Uh, and uh, looked like, looked like they had a pretty big uh, big turnout on their forums, um, but I was not able to attend. No. Yeah, that's awesome. I I heard um, I heard Obi and make some friends. You know, friendship is magic and all that jazz. Stop pressuring me. <laughs> oh, plus for me, there's um, I'm in the Lehigh Valley area up here in uh, Pennsylvania, and apparently there's a Lehigh Valley Brony group, which are like a bunch of the community college members. By having a chance, because they always do stuff when I'm at work, so that's kind of sucks. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, uh, that's right. how Dusty we'll Cat feels. Right. Yeah, that's how Dusty Cat feels. Uh, we did go to BronyCon over the summer, and it was my I took my daughter, my wife, and my daughter to it. And it was cool because me and my wife met at a convention, so this is the first time we had been back to a convention in a while. And then uh, it was my daughter's first convention, and she dressed up as Gala Twilight Sparkle. And she got, and it was pretty much me and her just tooling around and like showing all the stuff. Got her to, you know, meet the VAs, and I took her wow. to the rave, and she had her very first rave and everything. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> she's starting off young. <laughs> She was like, uh, well, it's cool because we went around the panel and stuff, and it was cool hanging around and, like, spending that time with her. And, you know, it was neat meeting all the people. And, and that was the cool thing about the fandom, too, that me and my wife both commented on, is that it wasn't... That's not a word! Crap. I did it. I knew I would screw up and curse on the show. Uh, no problem. Sweetie uh, Belly says something. Can't take it anywhere. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like, you know... You see, like, if you go to, like, anime concerts, there's always some sort of drama or crap going on. And it didn't feel that way when we had BronyCon. Everyone was super cool, super nice, respectful to all each right. other, you know, all the good stuff. I don't think they um, show it at the con. It's usually pre or post that it comes up. Yeah, like, afterwards you hear about the drama going on behind the seals. But if it doesn't concern you, then who gives a crap, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't care about that stuff. The thing is, like, if the guests had a good time, the guests had a good time. But it was cool because, like, we uh, she wanted to go to the like the concert or the rave at the end because they had uh, uh, Living Tombstone was there and uh, Omni Pony was there, who she really wanted to see. And I remember it was cool because we're there and we're standing at the edge of the like the mass of going to the pit. And I was like, "Come on, and let's go in there. Let's uh, let's rave." She's like, "No, no, I'm fine back here." And then someone was handing out glow sticks. She got a hand a couple of glow sticks and she was dead center of the pit, jumping up. And <laughs> 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 was like, wow. That's my girl. But it was cool. So, and uh, I, like I said, she had a, like a blast and everything, and it was it was really cool. And uh, I really haven't had any like people are like, "Wow, you're too old for this" or anything like that. So it's it's every, everyone's cool, and that's what the cool thing about the fandom is and the community is that there is a sense of community. I know there's people saying like, "Oh, the community's splintering and this, that, and the other," and there's this drama. And it's like, well, drama happens when you put a bunch of people together. It's inevitable. And the whole idea about the community itself is let's get past that drama and just treat each other like decent human beings. Exactly. Like the ponies do. Yeah. And I I think the coolest example that was like at the rave, uh, they're dancing and at one point her phone flew out of her pocket and shattered on the ground. Everyone uh, everyone stopped dancing, whipped out their phones, turned on the light and was helping gather up the pieces and helped us put it back together. Never would that happen anywhere else that, that I would see. Everyone would stop what they're doing and concern about helping somebody else out. They'll just trample the phone. Exactly. And it didn't happen. Someone saw this, like, whoa, wait, someone dropped their phone. Everyone stopped, and there's just that sense of community. And it's that cool interaction that you won't get anywhere else besides the Brony community. Or at least that's what I've seen in my years of convention going. Well, that's awesome, seriously, because. If you don't mind me asking, may I know, like, how much money was spent on uh, BronyCon for, for, for you personally? Uh, well, our tickets, tickets are like 65 bucks, I think. So me and my, I, yeah, so we, and then my daughter was discounted to like 30 bucks or something like that. So, what? and then all the swag we got, she, uh, saved up for months. Because <laughs> <Just go. laughs> we were supposed to take her to the January one because they do it, they used to do it by yearly. Mm-hmm. And I was right. going to take the one in January, but I had a, tore my calf muscle in a weightlifting accident and I was bound to a wheelchair Oh and my wife was like, you are not going to a convention in a wheelchair. <laughs> I am. I am going as Twilight in a wheelchair. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, right. so she had pretty much saved her money from January to July to go to the con, so. And she bought a bunch of stuff. 
Wow. So basically, it was uh, lots of swag and stuff. Money was spent on lots of swag and stuff. Money is always spent. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be spent anyway. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. That's cool, that's cool. Um, talking about that story, because I remember uh, Michelle Kieber telling us there's a story similar to that. Um, there was this one artist, he went to the toilet with his fanny pack. I think the fanny pack or a backpack, I, I think it's fanny. But anyway, um, he went to the toilet and put the fanny pack on a hook in the, the bathroom stall, however you want to call it. So when he went to his table, he realized that he didn't pick up his backpack or whatever you want to call it and when he went back to the toilet it was gone and inside that fanny pack or backpack or whatever that the baggie yeah whatever baggie you want to call it um was two thousand dollars inside it his sales from his artworks which he worked really really hard on yep yep and it was gone and well the next day he went to the lost and found and it was there with the money yeah, all two thousand dollars in it, Ooh, still there. Completely intact. That's awesome. And I think he did a police report, and the officer said, um, "This would never happen if it were in another convention." Yeah, and it's, yeah, definitely true. And it says a lot about our community. Like, it says a lot. Seriously. Absolutely, and that's like I said. It's uh, it, we say love and tolerate, and that's. You know, we live up to that, and uh, that's and that's the goal, and that's the whole main idea behind it. So we stick with it. You know, it's true. It's true. So, um, guys, any other questions? Yeah, uh, just a quick one. Since you say you like to wear the brony shirts out, have you ever had a brony encounter because of what you're wearing? I have not. I, I did. I had one. Oh, you, oh, oh. you did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I went. Uh, we have um, various fairs in the fall in my area, and. Uh, my wife and I uh, took our daughter to the fair, and I thought, hey, I'll put on the Rainbow Dash shirt, so I'm wearing my shirt, and um, uh, these two kids come to me, and one goes, Rainbow Dash! And I look at him, and he's wearing a, a Rarity shirt, and I go, Rarity! <laughs> and, uh, we, we said, we, we, we chat just for a, a, a quick second, because um, we were headed toward the exit at that point, and we were, we were kind of done for the day, um, but that was pretty cool, that was pretty cool. Uh, I, I, would I, would it. I would say they're Maybe 10th, 11th grade. I, okay. felt, I got the feeling of either late high school or early college, maybe. Oh, cool. Yeah, so again, I was the old part. I was, I was just going to want to point out the fact that I realized after joining this fandom, it seems that our way is, uh, of communication between other members of the fandom in, uh, in real life, non, non-virtual, uh, it's actually through, through those shirts and swags. I mean, we identify each other, each wearing... Yeah, sure. okay. and then we say, "Oh, yeah, hey, well, you're Brony or something like that." And then conversation starts, and typically, well, maybe we chat a bit, then we go off because it's just a brief encounter, and it's it's quite a it's quite a how you say nice experience, you would say. It's, it's social networking, and it really it really works. <laughs> I need to start Even your computer wallpaper can work it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Bonify electronics Like maybe Somebody noticed You're having a Funny looking wallpaper in your phone Or something And Hey what's that Then oh uh, This right so, But hmm, how do it. you Modify uh, Nokia 3310 <laughs> Back cover They, they sold so many Before the days of the iPhone The 3310 was the phone That was skinned the most uh. You go to any of the Phone shops in uh, KL And they're selling Tons of three three one zero covers, and they were like Stitch, there was Hello Kitty, and all these other franchises. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I think I think we're done, right? One more question. Oh. I, I was just looking at the uh, uh, OCs, um, Alphas OCs, and Five Iron OCs, and those made with Pony Creators. Yes, Pony Creators. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see. So uh, I guess there's no more questions, right? That was Brony time, and guys, you want to plug out your website? And wherever they can find you? Uh, absolutely. You can find us. Our website is bronytime.com. You can also find our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio or Android or I device. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. My call sign is at alpha underscore brony. Five irons is at five iron brony. And you can also email us. Uh, you can email me directly. My email is alpha underscore brony at bronytime.com and five irons is five iron brony at bronytime.com. 
excuse me, if you're interested in being on the panel or have questions about our show, discussion topics, things like that, that you want to get to both of us, you can email us at questions at brony. That's the show's email. Questions at brony at bronytime.com? Questions at bronytime.com. All right. Questions at bronytime.com. So, um, Five, did you mention your Twitter? I don't even remember. Uh, Alpha said it. Oh, all right. Okay. You've been so quiet. Why? But no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fading over here, guys. I think I dad call it co-host syndrome. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I call it two in the morning syndrome. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm so sorry. Oh. Forgot about that. Uh, we're, we're sorry about that. Okay. Um. Anyway. Um. Like, shout outs. Do we have any shout outs? Mine goes to you guys, Bruni Time, Alpha, and Five Iron. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a blast talking to you. Thank you. It's been great being on your show. Let's like standards and shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> well, my standards are really low. <laughs> Daniel, you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, okay. For I don't usually live stream ponies, but for the last uh, last night for the premiere, we live stream from Philly live stream, and uh, thank you for hosting that one, even though I don't know whether you're a guy or a girl. <laughs> Thanks to, you know, half the time I'm calling you him, half I'm calling you her, so, yeah, whoever you are, thank you very much for hosting the stream. News, you got anybody to shout, shout out to? Uh, one shout out to this guy called Carl Payne of EQD, the neuroscientist fellow. Yeah, just oh. shout out to him for keep on being awesome, keeping the neuroscience community awesome. Keep on oh, right. Gosh? Uh, I just want to say uh, have a good day to all the bronies out there. That's it. Wow, that's <laughs> really general. So, Five Fire and Alpha, you guys got any shout outs okay, to give out to? One last one for me, just one last one. Oh, you. A very big shout out to Apple Cider and Chef Sandy for having us on this week for Bronyville. You mean last week? It's still this week. It's no, they already recorded. Begins on Sunday, then yeah. Oh yeah, it's coming out. They soon. already record a new one, so it's not this week. Okay, fine. Last week. Thank you for having me on. Full stop. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I can't fun. keep time. Alpha Five, you got shout outs to give out to? Go ahead, Five Iron. I'm going to shout out to Gak for their stupidness. <laughs> Long live Gak. Uh, this episode well, I have a... this show was brought to you by Gak. <laughs> uh, Let's see. For me, well, I have uh, high standards of shout-out quality, so I'm going to make a shout-out to bronytime.com. Now, that, that is so lame. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they say we have low standards. <laughs> I just love I'd like to think of the worst possible thing imaginable to say and then say it and then take it back. Uh, but, um, gosh, shout-outs. Um, I would say, like, shout-out to pretty much all my Twitter followers because it's uh, cool. Uh, people who follow me before the show and follow me after. Uh, a couple guys I speak to a lot, uh, Random Brony Post, Son Vinyl, um, uh, Golly Mama, she's the new Brony we just interviewed as well, too. So all of those guys. Um, I just want to shout out to everyone who tuned in the show because we're on. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, we're doing this because of you guys, and we love your feedback and input. So definitely shout out to the Brony Time fans and those guys who uh, support us. Oh, and to uh, Placer Chasm, who is our first uh, owner. Uh, I thought the same thing when you did it. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, big shout out to him. Thank you for supporting us. We appreciate it. And we're going to give a shout out on our show too. So you're getting double the shout outs. Yay. Awesomeness. Okay. And if you want to send us any email, questions, concerns, or suggestions, you can send them to the MBS show at gmail.com. And our Twitter is at the MBS show. My personal Twitter is Norman Sanzo. And Daniel? Plus it too many times at S T P I N K I E. What does that spell? Sergeant. Sergeant Pinky. <laughs> I know Sergeant is S G T, but never mind. <laughs> and Tash, you have a Twitter? Yes, uh, at Sasha Irina. You can find it in the show notes as well. <laughs> All right, cool. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, and also like our Facebook page. Link will be provided in the show notes. So I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Tasha Irina. I'm the News Pony. I'm Alpha Baroni. Uh, yeah. Bye bye. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye bye, guys. Bye. Luna. Bye.
why don't you cover this one? Um, all right. It's, oh, crap. Chrome, Chrome, why do you have to hang now? Come on. I could take care of it. Yeah, you want well, to do we're going to talk about this in our podcast, so... Okay. No, well, so, I can do a dry run here. Um, let, let me... Well, you know what? I'm just going to leave this. So, um, anyway, um, Alpha, why don't you do it since Dan can do it? Go, Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now I have to restart Chrome. Never mind. Alpha, why don't you do it? Right, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is all going on the showroom floor. You, that's what you think. <laughs> and in the room floor with all this. <laughs> that's what you think, my friend. That's what you think. <laughs> uh, but all anyway, right. uh, let, me, let me intro you. Um, three, two, one... So let's move on to the next topic. Alpha, why didn't you take this one? Okay. Well, it turns out there are rumors going on that Disney has his eyes set on Hasbro. Could it be true? Could it be false? It's false. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spoiler much? Anyway. <laughs> I killed the discussion. <laughs> but it's true, it's false. Anyone I know, but I wrote up a whole section about the stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's entertain the idea if it was true. Continue. Uh, anyway. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Are you I killed a guy. A podcast is supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, the thing is... Uh, this you want to take another cut? <laughs> <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Oh, God. All right, um, no, maybe it's true. Who knows? This could be a cover-up. No, actually, um, the title, and you'll read the script down below, the links. Oh, okay. Okay, then Dan should do it, because apparently I'm screwing this up. (laughs) This will be a wonderful outtake. Hang on a moment, guys. I've got something to add to this. Any of you remember when uh, Disney, there were rumors that Disney was going to buy uh, Pixar? Already did. They already yeah, bought they did, eventually. But did you guys believe it when it first came out? Yeah. I never heard it, actually. Uh, right. How was that name back then? Um, let's, let's do this in the discussion. Anyway, um, Dan. The youngest in the room, so yeah. Dan. Yes. <laughs> Read this one, Disney. 